some mashup? Ignore the kicker to the left. It's fine. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> right. Mayor O'Keefe and councillors, I would like to begin uh, the, by complimenting the council for seeking to increase social housing in this area. The, uh, uh, the community supports this. The hard part is to find a suitable site or sites. However, many people believe the proposed enormous four-storey development above the existing car park is the, in the wrong place and the wrong type of building. I will now read from my letter as it sets out not only uh, the objections that I'm putting, but also a list of possible alternative sites. In the final analysis, I think the old Wanganui uh, Secondary College site, the old Marupna College uh, Hospital site, or part of the extensive land that the council owns for a transport hub on the south side of Marupna are the most, uh, the most appropriate. The reasons for objecting include, it is bad planning against uh, planning principles and the existing planning laws. The four-storey building would be totally out of character for the neighbourhood, the Ace College and the Heritage Overlay property on the corner of Morden Nixon Streets. The development would be very imposing and is totally contrary to the amenity of the area. Artificial changes to the planning scheme would have to be made and these would be extreme and bad and not justified. Secondly, it would lower values of nearby properties and make them less desirable and useful. That's houses and shops. Th thirdly, it will adversely impact and reduce the existing parking spaces, which are very much needed now, especially if we're attracting more people into the mall, with stairs, lifts, car ramps, pylons, uh, fire exits, garbage areas, possible shop, uh, sh possible shop uh, pedestrian access, etc., as well as street traffic problems. Fourthly, it will seriously impact ACE College adversely for access and safety for its students, parents, buses and cars, dropping off students and causing permanent shading of its ground and grounds and buildings, and also overlooking privacy concerns. Um, fifthly, it would not even be suitable for the proposed residents who would be on the upper two levels with access and safety problems for the residents, fire brigade, police, etc. Has a fully independent impact study been done on all the problems, including these and traffic management, valuation and planning concerns? Will it be strata titled? Sixthly, I question whether having particular regard to the sale being of airspace in the final result, with council getting what is left of the parking spaces, whether the public notice was accurate and sufficient and proper procedures satisfied to be valid. Seven, <clears throat> council has or can arrange other land which could be sold or given to beyond housing and Winteringham. Normal standalone houses are best some land suggestions are a four-storey development above the car park behind the Civic Centre. Picture it. A four-storey block above the car park outside. After all, the two, the two uh, sites are similar situations. And this one wouldn't uh, harm ACE. Secondly, the council's old work depot in Mason Street Remember I said site or sites. Uh, thirdly, the old Wanganui Secondary College site. Four, the old Marupna Hospital. Five, above the retardation basin beside the new fire station. Six, part of Parkside Estate, the old international village, but I don't, th I think that's out. Seven, part of the farm area on the south side of Marupna owned by the uh, council for a transport hub or eight, possibly, have a, have a one storey above the car park in High Street opposite Target. It is submitted that the development is, is a, a, a bad mistake and should be stopped, and everything rescinded immediately. 
the council, Beyond Housing and Winteringham should get together and consider other options which are appropriate. Of course, the development and my first suggestion above the uh, uh, for, for the same thing above the uh, car park behind the Civic Centre are both bad for most of the same reasons. But it just shows you the comparison and that you do perhaps need to uh, compare them. That is my presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. So, Bill, at five minutes the bell will go, just to give you that clarification one more minute to go, and then there's okay. any point of clarification from councillors for an extra few minutes if needed. Sorry, I didn't get the last So, bit. the bell will go at five minutes, yeah, yep. which will give you an extra minute to your six minutes, okay. and then a few more minutes if needed for any point of clarification from the councillors. Okay, thank you. Thanks, thanks for hearing me. I wish to object to both the sale of the land and the de de development of social housing on this site. I don't know where the proposal came from, but it is ill-conceived and has the potential of becoming a problem. Speaking to Victor Fram from so the social planning officer at the Homes Victoria, he said that this pro proposal appears to be um, a council-led a led, um, project, and I've got a letter here from Victor that actually says that. All right, so that's from the minister's office. Why, is, why was a car park chosen for this development? The, the car park is owned by the ratepayers through developers paying for car parks they couldn't supply, which I've done over the years. The council shouldn't, shouldn't sell the land, but if you're going to, your price of $450,000 is about 20% of what it should be. Now, I don't know where that came from because we couldn't get a copy of the um, valuation. We couldn't get a copy of most things from the council. Um, not very forthcoming. The council needs all the car parks it's got and, and we don't need to lose any of them. The car park's sh shape is unsuitable and doesn't allow for well-designed development. When 94 Nixon Street is developed with, I believe, a two-storey building, the car park will become enclosed on all sides with the exception of the street frontages. This will make the car park dimly lit and insecure. I don't think any of the public would like to park their cars and leave them there parked, for obvious reasons. Location in the CBD with no outdoor area, parkland, being multi-storey construction, doesn't seem to me to be an attractive place to live. A number of locations in the residential areas of Greater Shepparton with small, sorry, a number of locations in residential of this area would be more, with a small number of units would be much more livable. I would also, I also, it would also be more economical to build a number of smaller unit developments than, than, than this one, probably a million dollars in this case. The, re, the redevelopment of the mall. It's costing millions. Hopefully it will re reinvigorate the area and attract more people to shop and dine. More cars, more parks needed. The next topic I'd like to bring is the age, age ACE College. Council moved the ACE College to its current location. No consideration is given to ACE with, with this development by Council. Ethos Urban um, did a proposal for Council uh, didn't come to Shepparton, did a Google search and, and believed that Kittle Brothers was beside the, the car park, not the Ace College. The man from Ethos Urban didn't even know there was a college there. And I don't know if the council did either, other, other than you relocated the, that, that college there. The problems with, it, with, the, with this going ahead, the overshadowing of the courtyard, the solar panel installation, which, which will become basically useless, um, and the social impact on the students. Restricting the fire access. During the construction, the school may have to be closed as the fire escape into the car park will be blocked as nobody's allowed on a construction site during construction. And the other 
fire escape is through the front, front door of the school. So if you, if you get a, a fire in the school, um, the only way out is through the front door. Uh, sorry, if you get a, a, a fire in the, in the old house part of the building, you can't get outside the building from inside with, because the fire escape will be closed. So the school's going to have to be closed. Now, any councillors that haven't visited the ACE College and been for a tour, and I don't know whether that's the case, but if you haven't, I would suggest that you should, because I, prior to this all coming up, I really had no idea what ACE did. Um, I knew where it was, and I knew it only had 120 students or so, um, but going through and having a tour of the school, and do the tour when the kids are there, because it's inspiring to go through that, so that, that school, and see the children from, from year seven to year 12, and they've got a success rate at year 12 of 80%. Now that's not bad when they're taking in children there that are basically unable to go anywhere else. They're basically in limbo. So they, they get hold of them and they take them through. And if you see the way they operate there, it's inspirational. And for comments to come from people in Melbourne and people from the council that ACE are gonna to have to live with this if it goes ahead, I think is an absolute disgrace. Now, the cost of, the, of this project, I believe, has been estimated at $12 million. Pardon? I know that. I just I heard you earlier. Um, $12 million for 30 units. That's $400,000 a unit. Now, wouldn't it, be more, wouldn't it be a good suggestion to affordable housing to look around Shepparton and for $12 million, how many existing houses throughout the city, throughout the whole greater Shepparton, could you buy? You know, $400,000 a unit for these small units is ridiculous. That's what I'm saying about the cost of building this sort of um, development rather than the, um, a smaller develop for smaller developments. The, the Greater Shepherd and Local Government area has been allocated $45 million for affordable housing, a minimum. What are the plans for this money? There is, am there is ample sites across the region to do these developments at a reasonable cost. The only problem is I see the government bureaucracy and red tape will cause any sensible decisions making to be impossible as, as we've seen in the current situation. Thank you. No questions? Point of clarification. Uh, Bill, you mentioned you, you received a letter earlier. Who was that from again? Would you like a copy of it? Who was it from? Yeah. Big Fran, was it? Big Fran? Yeah, Big, no, you'd okay. like yeah, I'll have a copy. Thank you. He did make additional comments, but Thank he you. didn't put them in writing. No worries. Thanks for that, Bill. They were negative. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Thanks. Hello, gang. Thank you. Are we all good? Yeah. So, John, at five minutes, the bell will go with one more minute to go. That'll be six minutes, and if there's any points of clarification from the councillors, they'll raise those matters. Beautiful. Well, thank you for having me here today. I really appreciate uh, everyone uh, putting up uh, putting up with the time, and I can understand uh, it's a bit of a hard task uh, going through all this. Uh, so, first of all, I just want to let you know I'm not opposed to social housing. I think it's a great cause. I think it's required. I think it's part of our community. I think we need it, um, but not in this location um, for a number of reasons. One is uh, the, uh, there's a school next door uh, called ACE. Um, you, you'll probably hear a bit about this, but uh, the school has a number of issues um, in that the, um, there's going to be two years of dust, noise, uh, building works, um, shadows over the yard, uh, the solar panels will be pretty much useless, and the sign they've just invested around 50k for will be useless. So, so this will sort of uh, create a few hiccups and problems. Um, then uh, you've got you know um, other communities around the place uh, which are going to suffer because of all the works and we assume two years uh, of what this project would take. Um, my my properties, in my personal interest is I've got properties bordering Nixon, Maud, uh, Carrio, and Edward. Um, and um, in those properties, uh, I have tenants. Those tenants have expressed concerns that I don't want to continue the lease in those areas. 
um, and they will vacate the premises once the lease is expired. So I'm having direct impact because of this. Um, my, my uh, I suppose hardship would be that I've got to repay banks and uh, as a result I'll, be, I'll suffer because of it directly. So um, yeah, so a bit of, bit of concern there. Um, if the car park proceeds, um, I suppose, uh, yeah, it will bring this hardship on. Um, I, will be not, I'll, I won't be the other person. I've, I've spoken to other businesses in the area and they've also expressed concerns uh, similar to mine. Um, I understand that valuers value properties according to the proximity and sometimes uh, the proximity of various other uh, institutions and one is uh, the proximity to social housing. Um, this further impacts the, my property and the value of that property. So that's another concern. Um, I suppose um, the, other, the other issue is that it's uh, going to affect the northern aspect of the CBD. Uh, that we, there'll be uh, issues because of the location of this building and the entrance to the CBD, I feel that that will be impacted uh, in that the um, uh, a concrete jungle, so to speak, will, will be on the northern perimeter. And as such, you're currently doing works, you're improving the MEL, and I feel you can't, you're sort of doing one great thing and then counterbalancing with something which is not quite as nice. So it devalues what you're doing at the moment in the city. Um, I suppose I spent a fair bit of time on uh, Shepherd and Show Me, probably about 10 years, so I, I suppose that's a bit of time. In that, I find that, uh, or we found that we improved the town, we improved the shopping, we improved the appeal of the town. We also improved business wanting to come to Shepherd. If you're all of a sudden putting this up, driving businesses away, driving people away from you know, wanting to do business, um, again, counteracting the good stuff we did. There's a lot of better sites for this project. Um, I feel people in this environment would need greenery around them, would need trees, uh, facilities. Um, I can't see this site facilitating any of that. Um, I, think, I think it's going to be uh, tough on the people that tenant these premises. Um, I think they're, they're needing special needs and, and I think greenery and uh, grassed areas are really going to help them with their living and comfort in those, in those establishments. So um, if you had a site that facilitated that, that would be great. So, so, so with that, I think there's community engagement such that if you can't find a, a suitable area, um, I, I know I can get community members in and help you try and re relocate it to a better spot. As I say, not, not against it, I'm for it. Um, just think it's not the appropriate spot and uh, would love to be engaged to, to help find a better location. Um, there's so many, so many good things to have that you don't need to do damage to the good we've already created in, in the CBD. Um, the car park's a useful asset, uh, useful for shoppers, and uh, I don't think we should change it, leave it as is, and uh, leave it for the benefit of the shoppers and people in the area. So. Um, thank you for your time and thank you for listening and I hope you make the right decision. Thank you. No worries. Thank you. Hello, councillors. Welcome, councillors. Thank, thank you for the opportunity to speak here today. And at five minutes there'll be a bell just give that one minute warning. You won't need to ring the bell. Just let us know. I voted for you, my councillors because I believe that you have a vision for the future and you'll carry that out. But you need all the information you can get to ensure that you make the best decisions. I'm not against social housing. I, I do believe that Shepparton has three major characteristics that stand out from many other places. One, we have nice blue sky, we have nice trees and we have open spaces. And if I was a person who was needing social housing, I'd rather be housed in an area where I had those facilities available to me 
because I believe that our mental health is better enhanced by being in open areas rather than locked in the centre of town. The proposed facility will house about 90 people, but right next door you have 104 students and 15 staff are accommodated in ACE College. Now 80% of those students go on to become into tertiary education or into employment. For these kids, this is just a huge opportunity because they would probably be on the street if they weren't in this school. So we really need to think about the pros and cons of which group of people we should really be looking after. And I think that solves the problem by looking after the college. I believe to make a considered decision, we need to have all of the facts. And I'd ask the councillors who haven't yet been to Ace College to walk down the corridor and stand and look over the, um, the car park area. And could you have that picture up, please, for me? Uh, I've emailed it. Okay, and we'll get that. He wants to oh, pretty much. Anyway, as you stand, there is in front of you a roller door and a gate. That is the exit for all of the students and staff should there be a fire. Or they could exit down the hallway. Now, you imagine 104 students and 15 staff all crambling down a narrow hallway, it wouldn't be safe. But what if the fire is in the house? They're all trapped. There's no escape. And whilst you're standing there, you may come across a question which I was asking myself. How do we get to this position? How do we get to a position where we're going to endanger children's lives because of this project? The moment they lift the crane with anything on it, that area that they escape to is no longer available to them. I'd like an answer to that question as to why we're here, why all of this time has been spent. When it, it's very obvious to me, you can't do it. But I hope that you will take the time to go and have a look yourself personally. I thank you for your time today. And do you have any questions? A clarification or no? Am I allowed to ask one? You can ask a question. We'll see if we can answer it for you. To the CEO, Peter. What I've said, is that correct about the fire escape situation? Is there another alternative that I have not been able to explore in the three weeks that I've been working on it? Yeah, Ken, look, that's the detail that we'll be working through as we progress through this. Um, we know we're near at that stage, so uh, we're considering the options for the, the land to transfer or sale. So the details of fire exits and how the building might be constructed and what impact that might have or not on neighbours is all to be determined uh, further down the track. I thought that might have been done and available to the councils now, because councillors now, because it's been three months. Anyway. Please, councillors, I do encourage you to go and walk down that corridor and turn and have a look at that car park because I think you'll get a real, a real impact. I got a real impact from it. And those, kid, those kids require a good education. Thank you all. Um, do we have the Appreciate uh, graphic, uh, Michael? And councillors, I was just going to mention that. So, Ken, I haven't received a presentation this morning and may be trapped in, in the mail within our system. Very important. If I could just say to the councillors, as you get to the end of the corridor, you will see that fire plan and showing you where the escapes are. It's vital. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to us. No, thank you. Just use your big voice if you can. It's a little bit echoey in here. It's just to Shelley let you know and Bob at five minutes the bell will go. Okay. He'll give you the extra minute and then we've got an extra few minutes if we need to for any point of clarification. Okay. I'll just give my handbag to my handbag exactly. holder. <laughs> um, now, the notice of intention to sell land at the above address came to our attention via the article in the Shepparton News on the 20th of the 12th last year. And we just have to wonder why it was put out just before Christmas at the beginning of the holiday period. And um, then there was only three and a half weeks given for um, consultation at that stage. We find it absolutely incredible that the council would even consider this car park, 
car park, a place for four-storey development to house older and vulnerable residents. After speaking with many who work in the community housing sector, they advised multi-storey residential development isn't appropriate or suitable for the vulnerable or older cohort. Why should they have to live in concrete boxes when there's other land which would provide a much better lifestyle for tenants? Building a community neighbourhood is thought to be a better option. Shepparton isn't large and there is a great bus network so people can be housed in many areas that are more conducive to a better lifestyle for the tenants. We also object to the sale of any car parks in the CBD. We actually don't have enough car parking with the redevelopment of the mall and the resulting large numbers of shop shoppers hopefully returning to the CBD. We would need to ensure that we keep all our car parks and parking spaces. The council hasn't followed their own policies in regard to this project. We watched the live stream of the meeting where the sale or the gifting of the Maud, Street, Maud Nixon's car park was listed on the agenda. We're extremely disappointed in the way that this was debated and note below the above, below policies that haven't been followed by councillors or staff. The public transparency policy of 18th of August 2020, public notice advertised two days before Christmas and given just over three weeks to provide a submission. This was done just before Christmas in the holiday season when residents tend to take holidays, so this isn't very transparent. The governance rules, also 18th of August 2020, where council makes a decision in any matter, including persons acting with delegated authority of council, council must consider the matter and make the decision fairly by giving consideration and making a decision which is balanced, ethical and impartial and on the merits, free from favouritism or self-interest and without regard to irrelevant or unauthorised considerations. The decision-making process was sadly lacking with, uh, with this item. ACE College and their 100, 100 students, many of them vulnerable, were not mentioned or considered, and the loss of car, park, car parks for the CBD was not considered, some which would have been paid for by business or developers in lieu of providing appropriate parking on their sites. The valuation of land is also interesting. The value of 450,000 is well below market value when you consider prices paid for land, houses and commercial properties recently sold in this area. The process that has been adopted and resolutions made at an ordinary council meeting in December gives the appearance of predetermination of the sale of the Maud Edward Street car parks and this has been reinforced by recent surveying and geotechnical investigation at the site. We are very disappointed with the way in which this development has been managed and would urge the councillors to vote no to the sale, lease or gifting of this car park or any car park in the CBD for any type of housing development. Thank you. Well, thanks for coming in, you and Bob, um, uh, and for your report. I, I noticed that you've said that um, you're talking about building a community neighbourhood. Have you got any idea of what a community neighbourhood might look like and where it might be. Have you given that any consideration that would, would help the councillors? Well, we have. Um, there's, a, there's land where was the um, Gold Murray Water, I think, own it. It's up in Mason Street. There's room there for probably 20 units and you can have space around them. There's a great bus network. There's parks that they can walk around. Um, the walking tracks just down the street. There's lots of land there for that kind of development. and. Um, I would advise that one would be a really good one to look at. And would There's you see multi-level or single level? Development? Single level. Sorry? Single level single with level. space around it. That's what I've been reading. I've read quite a, bit, a few reports to the Victorian government that's saying about multi-storey development isn't really appropriate in this day and age. And people that are vulnerable and, have, and if they've got mental health problems or something like that, and you put them in a one bedroom unit that's four storeys and I just think, you know, it doesn't really work for them. There's not, it's just going to cause more problems and they're not going to have a nice place to sit and look out and walk around. It's just going to be one big development. Thanks, Shelley. Thank you so much, Shelley, for coming in. Thanks, Bob. Thank Thanks, you. Shelley. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. It's all very relaxed. <laughs> it does not look too relaxed. I'm telling you, it does not look relaxed. <laughs> so just to let you know, Janet, at five minutes the bell will go with the next. Yeah, Michael just said Kim. Oh, so thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, make a start. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name's Janet Gill Kirkman, and um, I'm a retired principal. 
and my 19 years of principalship has only been in vulnerable communities and the same as an assistant principal, only in the government system and only in vulnerable communities. Uh, in 2002, as principal at Gowrie Street Primary School, I was a key participant in the neighbourhood renewal project. Uh, and that was in the Parkside area, the north of Shepparton, as you'd know. There were three key goals of uh, the neighbourhood renewal. And one was to decrease disadvantage in the Parkside community. The second was to reduce crime and improve the personal safety for all community members in Parkside. And it was also to reduce the concentration of disadvantage uh, in, in those areas. The initial neighbourhood renewal plan uh, built one and, two, one and two storey shared apartments. They shared a fence line, they shared a wall, and they divided them either side. However, in the second phase, this model was rejected. The project changed to individual, new or renovated homes because dense close living was found to be unsuccessful. And examples of these buildings can still be found in Bronze Streets and Olympic Avenue uh, in Shepparton, in the Parkside area. It was unsuccessful because we know from um, in 2003, and I know I'm going back, and that's because I'm old, there was groundbreaking research for, about generational poverty from a lady called Ruby Payne. And we learnt about understanding, understanding people who have had generational poverty. And these were a few things that that groundbreaking research told us. And it was very evidence-based and it was very precise. For people who come from very vulnerable communities and who have been there all their life, their emotions are openly displayed. Their problem solving is highly reactive. Their noise level is way higher and I can tell you that from my school experience. That's a fact. Conflict is solved through physical fighting. Conflict is not solved through negotiation because people who have lived in vulnerable communities all their life only have the casual register of language. They don't have verbal negotiation skills. So conflict is, is solved through physical fighting. It's a moray, um, a culture of people who live in very vulnerable communities. People are possessions. It's much worse to steal someone's girlfriend than to steal a thing or a belonging. Far worse to steal someone's girlfriend. And something I learned over the years is that a parent would angrily defend a child or a family member no matter what they'd done, no matter how bad it was. And they would yell at the principal, they would yell at Mrs Gill or Mrs Kirkman and then I'd see them again two days later and they'd say, oh, sorry, I yelled at your love. You're doing a really good job as the boss at this school. So they were, you know, they had remorse and they, they were caring about me, but initially very reactive, highly reactive. Now, the basic tenet of neighbourhood renewal was to promote healthy living and build a stronger community by developing open spaces, playgrounds, barbecue areas, community gardens, affordable housing and replacement fencing. And this is still evident today when you look at the houses that are around Dorothy Roach Parks and Grace Edwards Parks in, in the Parkside area. Sadly, for the vulnerable people in our community, there are strong indicators of drug and alcohol dependency, risk of family violence, higher unemployment rates, disability pensioners and increased child protection notifications. I know these things for a fact. Long-term vulnerability also creates a high risk of ongoing mental health issues. Navigating daily life for the disadvantaged is highly complex. It is light years away from middle class, light years. In Beyond Housing Strategic Plan, these are the figures for their clients. 30% of them sought help for homelessness because of domestic and family violence. 30% said their mental health actually caused their homelessness. 49%, close to half, have one or more um, experienced mental health issues. 49%. Oh, is that five? <laughs> 
Of their renters, 37% have one or more people living with a disability. And for their renters, 43% said the most important thing about renting is feeling safe and secure. Can we be assured that a multi-storey complex where patrons share lifts, stairwells, a car park and walls will ensure a safe, secure environment for all people who live there. One that has no green space, no park, no outdoor seating and sits on top of a busy City of Greater Shepparton car park. I don't think we can. When I spoke to the housing team leader at Beyond Housing, her response was, we don't do high density housing. It just doesn't work. We don't do that. It's not our policy. But the Chief um, Operating Officer conceded that um, it, it was, this is actually not usual for Beyond Housing. Six? I've got a paragraph. Can I? <laughs> it only took me four minutes when I practised. <laughs> I, um, I urge you, our councillors, to vote against the proposal of selling the airspace and consider alternatives that include single level dwellings, do not share lounge rooms, walls, lifts or stairwells and have some space between the dwellings. They have playground, parks, a bus stop and a sense of openness and freedom. I'll finish there and thank you very much for listening. I know this would be an arduous couple of days for you, but I really appreciate uh, getting the opportunity to um, give you my experience from an evidence base. So thank you very much. Just, just quickly, I, uh, you say your bit first. Janet, um, you quoted some figures there. Uh, can, can we, through the office, get copy of, of what you've quoted there, those figures? Uh, yes, so the figures I've got from Beyond Housing were on the uh, website for Beyond Housing on the strategic plan and the generation of poverty um, is the lady is Ruby Payne and you just have to Google it and there's a super summary of her research. Okay, yeah, we, can, we can look that up. Yeah. Okay. Thanks Thank Janet. You. Thank you. Thank you. So, My friends just hand me closer. Sure, so, so, I've got, so I've got Laura and Celia presenting, have we? Yes. Yes. And we've also got Andrew, our CFO, and Alana, our senior project manager. Great, thank you so much. So we've got six minutes and at five minutes of Mallow Go, just for that one minute warning. So great. Thanks so much. You. you make a start. Thanks, Laura. So I think you have a presentation. I can do. All right. Thank you for making time for us today. Really appreciate it. I'll jump straight in and we'll have questions if you have time at the end, I suppose. Um, just to clarify while we're here, the consultation is to, was to inform a decision about the principle of using a council asset for social housing. It's not a decision based on the design and who's seen it and what level the design's at. It's not a decision that based on who may be housed. It's really about the merit and the principle of the argument and that's what we're going to address today. Why we're here and, and why now? We're in a housing crisis. That should not be a surprise to anyone in this room. The Nichols electorate is seventh in the top 10 Victorian electorates with social housing shortfalls, needed more than 2,900 homes as at today. In the last 12 months, we've assisted more than 1,400 people who are experiencing homelessness. 66% of our clients were new to our service. The situation's getting worse. Land is not readily available for us, and this site offers exceptional amenity. It reduces isolation and the reliance we have on cars. It engages people with community and supports. It brings to life the CBD, and people who pay affordable rents have money then to spend and stimulate the local economy. We're also here because diverse housing is needed. The needs of our renters are as diverse as anyone else's. We will continue to deliver one, two and three bedroom detached dwellings, peppered around our catchment and that's our typical type of development. This also fits the affordable housing strategy and the CBD strategy of the council. With regard to design, we know that this wasn't the purpose of the consultation but it certainly has been discussed and I'm sure you can appreciate why we'd want to clarify a few items. We have consulted at length 
with the planning officers and we will continue to do so. That is standard practice for us for all development is to work with our local council planning officers. We also have an internal process where we engage our stakeholders as always. We are held to a higher standard than most because of who we house and while it's not fair, we certainly embrace the opportunity to do best by our community. This will be, any consultation from here out will be with suitably developed plans and not before. At this stage, we haven't secured land or funding and the, the plans are in development. The next point on, develop, on design relates to the designs that were delivered as part of the consultation package. These were plans were not ours and were never intended to be. They were just an example provided by council officers. If you have further questions about those designs and their inclusion, that really should be directed to the planning officers. But that said, we have listened to concerns noted in the media, particularly around safety, overlooking and traffic, and, and they're being addressed as they would be in most developments, but we've taken specific care to listen and to hear. In particular, balconies overlooking the school. This was never our intention, and they relate to the sample plan only. We already pepper housing across our whole catchment. This is just one example of a different, slightly different development. And it's certainly not in the community's interest to have a poorly designed property, and it's not in our interest either. What we have seen also in the discussions online and in the, in the media is some of the most disgusting, discriminatory and false language used to describe our renters in social housing. These people are already part of our community. They live, work, shop and try to go to school beside us every day and their contribution is valued. We've even had feedback from our renters that this conversation is now impacting their life. They feel ashamed to say where they live and they describe themselves as being deemed as losers. That's unacceptable. Council have a responsibility to listen to their voice and respect their rights as much as those with louder voices and deeper pockets. The success of any community can be measured on how it embraces diversity and cares for the most vulnerable. And we have an opportunity now to demonstrate the depth of our care. Just over 12 months ago, I attended a council meeting about Graham Street. But it's the same conversation, but a different location. In the formal consultation process, we only had one objection. They would, like, they would have liked to see Graham Street made as a park. That was it. With regard to some of the other um, disgusting comments we've had made about our renters, the Department of Justice identifies where pedophiles can be housed and it would never be next to a school. With regard to drug dealers, well, if you're not a very good drug dealer if you're in social housing, well, I suspect they're probably in the new estates. With regard to who we do house, we house older women who are on their own and have no superannuation. We house young people without family supports and no rental reference. We support people who cannot work because they're sick or injured. We support people who are on, have a disability or on a pension and we support victim survivors of family violence. There are specific council concerns that we are addressing here. Our proposal with regard to car parking meets the planning scheme. It's not our responsibility to address your future needs for parking and while you lose some car parks, you do gain some ratepayers. There is no affordable land, so this, depart this development style and location is essential. We have plenty of experience managing medium and high density accommodation. We address the safety concerns through design and good management. And CBDs are safer when people are in them. We ask that you do what is right based on Council's own policies and strategies to address our shared responsibility. We ask you to make a decision that will mean these strategies are tangible and real, not words on a page and empty rhetoric. We ask you to consider those who are most vulnerable, whose voices are often unheard and drowned out by louder voices and deeper pockets. Probably just a point of clarification. So when you talked about Graham Street, I think it's really hard to compare that with what we're talking about today. It's a very different model completely different so that's probably to me not really an equal on equal par to be honest i don't you know of course we expect there would have been perhaps more objections than what we had but in saying that it's a very different model so was, i probably do see that divide yeah i think that the, the arguments are the same so with respect about, about where we put, put those, those people, people and, and that level of density, density. and i think so we're having some of the same commentary and arguments in in social media, media. that was my okay, no, my correlation right. 
Does yep. anyone else have any points of clarification, Jeff? Uh, same as before me. Uh, I'm, thank you. I'm just asking uh, if I can have a copy of this. We can have a copy of your presentation. It's with the council officers. All right, so we will be given. Thank you very much. Jeff? Just thanks, Laura, for your uh, presentation. Just in relation to the look and feel of the place, uh, we had the first one that was done up, and now we've had a second one. We, we noted the other one, the next one. Was it last Tuesday? The Tuesday, full time between. Last Tuesday. Um, so you're saying that the end design will be different to that again? It'll constantly be refined. We, we do consultation in multiple phases, so we, we continually update the design. I think the original one that went out with the consultation was just an example of what could be here. It wasn't our design, and we're working through the design you know, at the moment. We're continuing to consult. We've been listening already. Um, so the, the designs are always evolving until you get a planning permit. So how close to the final design would the one that we saw last week, how, how close to that would, would the final one be, in your opinion? I think it would be relatively close. We still have consultations to take on board. We still have to secure project funding and go through a planning um, assessment. But it wouldn't be, I don't think, a wholesale change from that, that style. But that said, it may be depending on the feedback. OK. Thanks, Laura. Greg? Oh, thank you, Kim. Uh, yeah, thanks, Laura, and the team. Um, you know, you guys do an amazing job right throughout Victoria, um, you know, for our vulnerable people and homeless people, and you, and you continue to do that, and we support you with that. Um, you, you suggested that we talk to the most vulnerable group. Councillors should do that. What, what's your suggestions, and who do you think we should target in that discussion? There's certainly people who are on low incomes in a range of settings for the BC schools through what people we work with, and we can help facilitate that if you'd like to speak to some renters. Um, their voices are typically drowned out because they're embarrassed to speak. There's a lot of stigma associated with their life situation, and so we try to be respectful of that. That's why we have organisations like ourselves and peak bodies like Council of Homeless Persons and the Community Housing Industry Association of Victoria are good places to start for. Um, a higher level of, con uh, of consultation that doesn't single out people who might know you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Uh, just for me, finally, Laura, so with the, what I'm calling perhaps a concept design now, um, you know, we were hoping that perhaps the community would get to see that. I know there's some funding restrictions, but I am really mindful of ACE and obviously the more broader community really needing to see that concept design so that they can come back um, you know, to make some comment and some, have some input. So when we say it's getting close, I would like to, you know, is there a, is there a process now that will go out to the community? We'll be having some targeted consultations with ACE and with the Chamber of Commerce to start with. Um, we're working closely with the potential funding body about what we can do. Of course, we would like this wrapped up and taken care of because um, it puts what we want to do at risk. So we'll be continuing to consult. Um, you know, if we're successful in getting funding, it'll be mid-year before we know if this is going ahead. So is that the normal process? Then you would actually connect with ACE um, and spend... We will we'll do it prior to that in this case, but typically you want to get funding first. Yeah, just to add to that, the intention is to, to consult with ACE and others earlier than that, but obviously if, if we secure funding, there would be a requirement to have a broader consultation process as part of that as well. So the funding is likely to require that on top of what we would normally do. Okay. It's a right. public community. That'll be a part of public consultation as well. That's demanded by the planning scheme. Yes. Okay, so that's probably the information that we need to get out to the community, you know, what this actually looks like, this whole project. I think this has been some of the dissatisfaction as well, just the understanding of how this actually works. So thank you for that. I think we definitely need to make that clearer. Thank you so much for thank coming you. in today. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Hello, Wendy. I am over here. How are you? Hello, Kim. Thank you so much for coming in today. So at five minutes will be a bell. We just want more minute to go, and we have a little bit of extra time yeah. if needed for clarification. Running a bit behind yeah. schedule. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Make a start. Okay. Thank now you. the microphone's on. Right. Thank you for your time today to speak on my opposing the social housing development in Maud Nixon Street, Edward Street. My greatest concern is for the students of ACE College who do not conform to attending mainstream schools. These students need to be encouraged in their development to enable them to be secure in the future as citizens in our community without having any anxiety. They will be the future citizens in our community without that we have failed our duty of care. 
the fire emergency exit in the car park will be blocked and the safety of the children must come first. Who is in charge of this development? I oppose the social housing development on this site. It will reduce parking in the CBD. A shortage of parking close to the central area is already affecting the disabled and ageing community, of which I am one. If residents in this development do not own a vehicle, could shopping trolleys become a problem being left in the street and car park area? Have social housing residents been consulted with really this project? If so, has there been any feedback and have other areas been considered? High Street Car Park close to all amenities, shopping, Centrelink, etc. Thank you. Has anyone got any points of clarification? No. Thank you so much for coming in today. Okay. Thank Appreciate you. it, Wendy. Thank, thank you so much. Thanks, Wendy. So, Blake, just to let you know, at five minutes you'll hear the bell with one more minute to go, and we've yep. got a few extra minutes after if we need it for any point of clarification. Perfect. Okay, make a start. Thank you. No worries. Hi, I'm Blake Nags. Um, I apologise for all the spelling mistakes. I didn't quite um, get it in time, so <laughs> I just want to say sorry for that. And um, I'm a solo accredited installer and electrician. So, yep. Cheers. If the new build is going ahead, these are the disadvantages. Uh, the parking. As a tradesman, having a big car, it's very tight to park on the street, so I um, tend to use this car park a lot. Uh, you need a minimum a height of 2.5 to get your clearances on your roof racks. Um, with, with the enclosed car park, you probably won't get this. Um, it's already hard enough to get a park around the Maud Street area as it is, uh, so with the growing growing sort of business. So, next slide. Ace College Solar. The solar is going to be shaded on the Ace building. This could cause hot spots in the panels and, and could, could be a massive fire hazard. Ace College Solar. Um, the Ace College Solar in the CO2 savings um, has saved 9.23 tonnes. It's equivalent to 237 trees or driving 37,000 k's. Um, this is in four months. So it's quite a good saving. Ace College has saved 3,500 by going solar in the past four months. This savings will be made redundant on the solar system um, due to the shading around the, the building of Ace College, if the proposed site is going to go ahead. Um, the solar system is worth roughly around $50,000. So. The proposed build. Whilst construction is underway, these are the concerns I have. The build time will be at the minimum of 18 months and will create the following problems. Parking in the Maud Street area will be lost due to site workers and barricading a safe zone around the area. Pedestrians will be forced to walk around the construction site or potentially even on the road. Dust and noise concerns for the college and the surrounding residents and business. The tenants' wellbeing. If the tenants live on the proposed site, these are the following concerns. No green space around the site. The closest park is Queen's Gardens. The tenants will only see rooftops like the image below there. So they'll only see tops of houses. And are the te tenants going to have an outdoor area? This is what the proposed site's going to look like. As you can see, there's the Ace College, if you press play on that video. So basically this is a 3D model. The um, brown building is the proposed site. 
basically you can see it's just going to shade north on the um, Nixon Street side, so we're facing Maud Street as you see it now. And you can see it's just going to propose a massive shade around the area. It's quite a large site. And what are the other proposed location? I oppose the sale, gifting or leasing of this land. And that's me. Do you have any points of clarification? No. That was a really good presentation. Thank you so no much, Blake. Really Thank you so it. much. Thanks, Blake. Thank you. Okay, Blake. Thank you. My presentation. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today and hear my uh, objections. Uh, my name's David Earl. I've been a resident of Shepparton for 43 years. Um, I've been an active community volunteer through Apex and Rotary. I relate and appreciate the problem of homelessness, and I'm proud to say our Rotary clubs donated tens of thousands of dollars to the homeless in Shepparton. I support Shepparton's affordable housing strategy. My issue is, is with the location of this particular development. So the first objection is in the, uh, the detriment of this development to the Ace College. There's a number of issues with safety, noise, shading and privacy. That view is from one of the upper level classrooms looking to the north. If this four story development goes ahead, there will be no daylight and be, kids will be looking into a great wall. I have a problem with the loss of car parking. I think that the future of the CBD in Shepparton is relying on an easy access to plenty of car parking. We're going to lose several park car spaces, and I believe the residents will be reluctant to use the new facility. I'm concerned about the impact on the food precinct. We have this wonderful Friar Street, Ward Street food precinct, which brings visitors and residents into town. That's fantastic. Sadly, a number of cafes, restaurants, and shops have already said they're moving away if this development proceeds. I'm concerned about the impact on the CBD. Shepherd and Zone document in 2008 uh, has a vision for a welcoming and safe ambience to be created for the CBD, the residents and visitors. I believe that this uh, development will be to the detriment of that welcoming and safe ambience. I've done a considerable amount of work in looking at uh, how the development relates, conforms to the Victorian planning provisions. Uh, clause 55 relates to two or more dwellings and a lot, and it also covers apartments of four storeys or less. It's interesting that the day before your December council meeting, there was an amendment to the Act. Uh, on the 20th of December, and that related specifically to better apartment design. So a number of changes to the, uh, to the Act um, in the guidelines. And I just want to go through some of those with you. Firstly, uh, clause 5501 requires that a development proposal must have a neighbourhood and site description and have a design response that shows how it responds to the neighbourhood character. The planners have ignored the requirement for a neighbourhood and site description and design response. Surely the existence of an adjoining school should make it mandatory for architects to explain how their design will conform with Clause 55. Clause 5502 and Standard B1. You have to address the neighbourhood character and infrastructure. The proposed design must respect the existing or preferred neighbourhood character and respond to the features of the site. This proposed development does not comply with Standard B1 because the design does not respect the existing or preferred neighbourhood character and does not respond to the features of the site, i.e. in the joining school. Clause 5504 relates to the overlooking objective. The proposed development does not comply with standard B22 because there will be views directly into Ace College. Standard B35, energy efficiency objectives. The proposed development fails to comply with standard B35 because it will shade the solar panels and unreasonably reduce the energy efficiency of Ace College. Green space, we'll talk about green space and apartments. There was some great research done by Drs Andrews and Warner from Deakin University in 2019. They concluded that access to green natural spaces was non-negotiable for families to counterbalance and components of apartment living. This proposed development does not comply with standard B36 
as the terrace area on level three is essentially indoors. It also does not comply with standard B38 with the provision of trees and canopy cover. The new amendments to the uh, provisions uh, will uh, force this development to have 350 square metres of canopy cover and 375 metres, that's 15 per cent of the site, in deep soil cover. That won't fit. Standard B37 requires solar access to communal outdoor space. At least 50 per cent of the area should get two hours of sunlight. Again, the proposed development will fail in this area because the open space on level three won't get that sunlight facing east west. My biggest concern in this whole development is the process. I'll put to you why was the proposal considered when it fails to comply with clause 55 of the Victorian planning provisions in at least five areas. Where is the neighbourhood and site description and design response? Why has council failed to respect the existing neighbourhood character and respond to the features of the site? Why has the CEO pushed this proposal through to the point of signing an MOU before public consultation? These are the issues. I'm a proud Rotarian and we follow a moral code of conduct in our personal and business relationships called the four-way test. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? I'll put to you all today that does this proposed development pass the four-way test? Thank you. Point of clarification, councillors. Councillor Brief. Oh, sorry, Peter, do you want to go first? Yeah, David. Um, you said that the council planners had ignored uh, various provisions of the planning scheme. Um, we're not at a stage, uh, we're at a stage where we're considering the sale, uh, possible sale of land. Yes. Um, planning matters will be dealt with at an appropriate time and they may mostly be dealt with by the Minister. Right. So to say that council planners have ignored uh, provisions of the planning scheme is not correct. Okay. Right. Um, <coughs> Was that one? Uh, MOU. MOU, pushing in. Oh, the MOU. Yeah, thank you. Uh, MOU uh, was a resolution uh, that was dealt with at a previous council meeting. So that's done uh, under authority. And um, that's just to um, create the partnership, um, which is backed up by an affordable housing strategy uh, and in no way um, predetermines or preempts anything. It's just to ensure that. Uh, there's a partnership arrangement and uh, information is shared and uh, that uh, we plan this uh, development appropriately. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, David. Um, I was just um, checking, I've read through your uh, objection, your proposed yes. objection here, um, but I was also, um, some of the points that you've clarified in the, those overheads, would we be able to get a copy of that, please? Yes, certainly. I'm happy to make that available, that document. You've, you've you. got a copy. That was, that, yeah, because you, you've alluded to them in there, but of course you've spoken to them there, which is yes. different clarity. Yeah, thank yep, you. No, happy to make them available. Thank you. I, I just believe there's provisions there, Peter, that uh, I don't think we should have gone this far when there's so many failings, that just to ignore a school, ignore the character, to go that far and get into MOUs, it just, I couldn't believe we'd gone that far without addressing those issues. Frank? I thank him. Yeah, thank you, David, for your presentation today and your time. I just wanted to, uh, just to, um, some clarification on a comment you made. You said that food vendors and some shop owners in Friar Street would move away yes. from if this construction went, it went ahead. Um, can you just tell me a little bit more about that, or was it just a reactive comment that they would say in that in the in the moment, or is it? I mean, you know what. What exactly do you mean by that would move away? Well, I've had it in good authority that a number of those cafes and restaurants have said that's it. They're not hanging around for that development. If they, that comes in, they're off. You, you're talking about established already yes. shops? established shops already. Would close already. their businesses yes. because of this development. Is that Correct. what you're saying? Yep. Okay. Even though there's more people Even at though their doorstep? Uh, well, it depends on the clientele, I suppose. Yeah, that's 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 their perception, and uh, whether it's right or wrong, but that's what they've said. And I think that's a sad thing for Shepherd and to lose any restaurant or cafe. Exactly. It's one of our strengths of Shep of Fries and Maud Street. Okay. David, uh, approximately how many businesses would have said that to you? Uh, look, there would be four that I know of, but you know. Okay. Yeah. 
excuse me, sorry. So yeah, about four, but there might be more. I haven't done an extensive survey, but I've had on good authority that those particular businesses said they're, they're moving. All right, thank you. Okay, any other points of clarification? Thank you for coming in today, David. Thank you for the Thanks, opportunity. David. Thanks, David. Thank you very much. Um, um, okay, thank you. Um, Firstly, I'd just like to thank the councillors and you. Yes, sorry. I'd just like to thank um, yourself and the councillors for taking the time to listen to the community and their concerns regarding this development. Um, I have a couple of concerns. One is about the reduction of safe parking for residents. The other is about the impact that this will have on Ace College. Um, Ace College plays a great important part in the education of the students of Greater Shepparton. Um, I think this building will hugely impact them and put at risk um, their safety. Um, and I also believe that um, we should not find, try to find a solution for one issue to then create another issue for something else. Um, and I urge council to treat, not to treat the college and their students like they are not important. Um, and thank you for letting me speak today. Thank you. Anything to ask now? Thank you, really appreciate your time for thank coming you. in today. Thank you. Have a lovely day, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming in. Just to let you know, at the five-minute mark, you'll hear just a one-minute warning with the bell. Absolutely. And, um, some time after if we need some clarification. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thanks for this. It may have already been addressed by others, but here goes anyway. Um, I'm Jan, and this is my husband, John. So basically, I wrote the presentation on behalf of both of us. We're residents at 93 Nixon Street. Um, that's our home. So it's directly across from the proposed development. So we're strongly in oppose of this um, and we're very concerned. So basically the who, the how and all of the details of this concept have been withheld so it, um, it's hard to factually focus on a lot of detail. So if you would release the plans we probably would have had more content to say too. Um, I just question whether that as councillors whether you were all aware of sending it to the consultation stage, whether that basically was explained fully. Um, did you realise that you know you would have the draft completed and the soil tests and um, the surveying all done prior to any consultation from people like us? Um, we're one step away from losing any further input, so basically um, we're quite very concerned, as I've said. We question whether you've forgotten about the Ace College. I know that that will be addressed. So North Facing School, Sunlight, 100 plus students, um, they'll be unable to trade and they'll lose their accreditation. Uh, are you considering any future CBD growth? We're really concerned about the loss of car parking. Both John and I work for a business in Nixon Street as well, um, and previously to our home being that was our business as well. So. We've lived in Nixon Street and worked in Nixon Street for probably on 15 years and yeah, we're yeah, very, very surprised at this. Um, I feel that this negates any promotional or retail growth in this area. Um, the north used to be the, the north facing window into the CBD, um, the cultural probably better end of, of Shepparton. So um, we just question how this promotes any vibrancy in the area. We're also enormously concerned that this will devalue our property value and the potential sale severely affect any of that. So um, we'll be facing a multi-storey box. This will severely impact our privacy, particularly if it has any access to rooftop or um, straight over into our, in our yard. So um, we feel more consideration needs to be given and other far more suitable sites with more area and more green space should be available. As I've mentioned, I, we work at 100 Nixon Street, so management is considering our leasing commitment for the future 
and very concerned in regards to our staff safety. We do use that car park and so do, um, so do our clientele, so we're um, enormously concerned. Finally, I just want to add that you're our elected advocates for the community. We appeal to you to vote no um, and you're there to listen to the community. There is, there is a great need for social housing, but wrong concept and wrong spot. So, thank you. Points of clarification that councils need to raise. Jeff? Yeah, thanks, Jan. Um, Jan, um, I'm just looking at your um, submission. Thanks for that, and thanks for coming today. Yep. You've, you've asked a number of questions. Do you want those, any of those questions? Well, I wasn't sure whether there was interaction, Dobbo, so basically I basically thought that I was here to present, not to have Jeff open today. forum. So. Yeah, it's more clarification. And, and Happy to do that if you want to. Well, if you think you can answer, that's... Well, it's not up to me to... It's up to you guys if you want to do it. We'll send back those and send Yeah, well, OK. Well, Jed said, well, have a look at some of those questions you put in and give you some answers to them because they are specific questions and I think... Yeah. Um, I, as a point, footnote two, um, I found it difficult to get confirmation of my submission. I never got any email of that. And until this morning when I rang, I hadn't even got confirmation of today. So. Um, I don't know. I know you've had a lot of submissions, but yeah, technically there's some work to do in the system. So. Apologies for that, Jen. That's we okay. have had a couple of hiccups, but in saying yeah. that, yeah, we'll yeah. certainly see what we can do to improve on that. But thank yeah. you so much. Just one point of clarification in regard to the soil testing. That wasn't Council doing that. It was actually the, the proposals coming to us. They wanted to propose the plan and obviously they had to do some testing. We certainly didn't. There's no works that are actually you know, forging ahead. Obviously, there's still a determination to be made. Have you allocated money for that to happen? Sorry? Have you allocated money for that to happen, though? No, no it's not our job. Not at all. It's not our, no. Not our okay. cost. No, that's their cost and their, their risk of doing that, if that's what they feel needs to happen to, to yep. do the proposal. So it's okay. definitely not... Counts. We're enormously concerned also because, as I said, we've lived across there. Um, after the school was constructed, um, the car park lost all its lighting. Um, as Shepparton does, a lot of Shepparton people walk through there late at night. There's a lot of yeah, things that go on in that area. We've asked a couple of times now for the lighting to be replaced. Um, I think they're onto it, but yeah, I still haven't seen the lighting come back on because it is a little dark corner there that yeah can create a few issues. Thanks for that, Jen. You know, we um, we we got other properties in Shep, so we believe in it, and um, in all honesty, we're totally disillusioned. This goes ahead. It's as simple as that. So we, we paid a lot of rates over a lot of time. And we believe in Nixon Street. We believe in Shepparton and Central Shep. So I hope, you know, a lot of thoughts are going to be put into this. Um, because really, we it's not about us. It's about the homeless. Let's face facts. Let's face facts. Um, but I hope you really look at every other alternative, the alternative, instead of just one. Because it's been thrown at you. So due diligence is a great, great thing in business, if you're smart, so you should be dragging in three or four different ideas. Well, that's the only proposal we've had so far, but thank, thank you so you much for coming. For we time. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. Jen. Thank Thanks, you. John. Thanks, Nate. Oh, didn't think it'd be like this. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yep. Yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah. yeah, well, thank you very much for um, hearing my little submission. I'm not a resident of Shepparton, but I did explain to the girls I'm a taxpayer and uh, I'm very passionate about social housing, so you won't get any complaints from me about social housing. But uh, I was concerned with the site. I think really think it's the wrong spot. I really believe in the ACE school. And I did think for a moment, I hope they're not trying to move that over to the Greater Shepparton School because I think there's, the schools, there's not, you know, one size doesn't fit all. I put that in my submission and uh, I think that school does a marvellous job and I think having any, I don't know who was proposed that would go into that site, but it's just, it's not a good fit. And I'd probably yeah, like to know, as a taxpayer, sort of what, I think the, the whole, uh, the big build is really, really good, but, but what the overall thing is for Shepparton and how you're going to div divvy up how many people you've got that are needing, whether it's, you know, from domestic violence, whether it's women that, that, or people that just can't, have, 
got nowhere to go, whether it's, I think there's one in 10 Aboriginal need, need housing, there's refugees, so there's a whole, whole gamut um, that it covers, but I'd, I'm not sure what Shepparton's policy is on how that is going to be handled. And then I would have liked to have seen all the land that you don't require at the moment, and even if you just wanted to lease some of the land and, and get that back, but what land is, is surplus to needs at the moment and what could be best suited. I couldn't get my head around the double deckers thing because I think, well, if you're going for, you know, to cut down on emissions, why would you have a double car park? That re that really baffled me. I think the privacy of the school is tantamount. It's um, it's just a it's just a no go. But I, I think we really need to make sure that the people that are that are going into social housing and they do say that uh, if people are at risk of homeless homelessness, it has a huge impact on their health and well-being. And that's not just for them, it's the whole community. So you want it to be really good. You want the people to feel at home where they are. You want the people in the neighbourhood. You want everyone to feel connected. That's how I look at it. So I sort of would imagine that you'd, you'd look at, well, what land is, do we have? And you, you don't want somewhere that's way out of the way. You want people to feel connected. If they want to go to the lake, they want to go to the footy ground, wherever. But I think you've got to have play spaces, whereas in um, that particular spot, I thought, well, where would you go? There's Deacon Reserve, um, there's the schools, but there's really the Maud Street Mel, but there's no real green green spot there. And I think that's really important because we all like to go out in our backyard and we like to have a barbecue and things like that. So I think that's really important that people wouldn't feel that, oh yeah, aren't we so lucky? We've just been put here. So I think, you know, we probably need to hear from the people who the, the housing is being provided for. Um, I'd really love Shepherd and to look at the possibility in amongst all that money that you could come up with some sort of scheme that for the low income earners, that, um, that they could possibly buy something. That wouldn't be everybody, but there would be the possibility, like in the old days with the Housing Commission houses, people did have the chance um, to buy their, their own property. So. I'd, I'd like to, see, yeah, so I'm not sure what the policy for Greater Shepparton is, but that's what I'd love to see. I'd love to see the community to see what land you've got available and then invite comments on, and also from the groups of people, because a huge range of groups, where, you know, where would you like to live? Where would you feel most comfortable? What are the things that, you know, what do your kids like to do if it's, you know, say, um, violence victims, family violence and that, you know, what would be best for them? Um, because you, you want that connectedness with the, um, the whole um, community. Um, what else did I say, my thing? Uh, so I don't, I don't disagree with the social housing. Uh, I love the light, I have had the opportunity to look at the um, lighthouse project round opposite the TAFE. I think that's brilliant, but it's probably a little bit different because it's got that under underlying support there, which I think is fabulous for the young kids that are studying. I'd like to see that with the social housing, that, um, or whether it's you know for people that have got mental illness but can still manage to live in the community, that there are really good support services. So it's not just a matter of here's a house, but here's a place you can go, or there's some people that can, if you need help, um, you know, they can, you can check in with them. So you've got that real blanket of support there so it, that it is actually successful. Um, I've got here, utilising space that is strategic in transport corridors and near facilities, as well as curbing urban sprawl and disconnectedness within communities, that's commendable. So I get the bit about going up and that, but not in this case. However, this site does not fit the bill. For a sustainable green environment, why would you consider two car parks? Walking and cycling come to mind more readily for exercise, proximity to facilities and accessing public transport. Being part of the village feel, being part of a community. I was amazed to read the letter read by, um, written by Bronwyn Rose. Uh, the apparent lack of community consultation goes against everything that local government is meant to stand for. The foyer in Friar Street is impressive. A wonderful example of a very spe specialised social housing for youth that sets them up for being able to continue their education and able to be a valued community member and that's what it's all about, to give people hope and they feel valued. I would hope every aspect of who needs social housing is being considered. For example, older women leaving a relationship with no superannuation, I'll speak fast, and 
sleeping in their car if they have one, mental health, physical disability, as well as those who just cannot find affordable rentals. In this planning, I would like consideration to be given to the length of the period of occupancy slash lease and the possibility of eventual ownership in some cases. Meanwhile, please let ACE thrive and find another place for this much needed housing. Not every child fits the mainstream model, just as many people become their own boss while others work for a corporation. There needs to be courses for courses. So we're in, in life, in real life, we're all different. And sometimes a big school or I don't know whether perhaps some people think those kids can go somewhere else. No, they can't go somewhere else. And it's, a, it's a, a huge saving having that school there because we don't want kids to go into the justice system. And some kids, if they get that special care and that, it's just what really makes their life um, worthwhile. So I'd really like you to cons reconsider and I'd actually, even though I don't live in Shepparton, but I'm very, very interested and we probably have people from Yamurka that do come down and, you know, shift down to Shepparton, that could actually see a plan, actually see a plan of what you've got in mind for so social housing for Shepparton and some opportunities for some ownership and also input from the people who are going to be um, uh, renting or whatever, you know, possibly trying to own these things. But anyhow, thank you for listening to Thanks, me. Murray. <laughs> Thanks, Murray. And Thanks all the best. The Thanks, Murray. Thank you, Murray. Thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. So do we start straight away? Yeah, or straight, away. Right. No, straight away. Start straight away. Thanks. All right. I just want to thank everybody for bringing us to the Star Chamber. Good. Very pleased. Um, this is Janet Searle, I'm Roger Perry. We'd just like to say that we walked here because um, we live so close to the centre of town, it is just an ideal living spot for us. We've lived in the same address for over 25 years. Our objections to this plan are on a community level and on a personal level, as we will be the ones most affected by this construction. You'll hear a lot of other ones that are affected because they've got the business there or the school there, they're, they're not there 24-7. We'll be under the shadow of this thing 24-7. So as far as the most affected of this, um, of the lot, um, I think we we take the cake. Um, when we purchased this, purchased this house, it was fitted out for the, construction, for the construction of blinds and awnings, which was Bush's blinds, and had no resemblance to a domestic home at all. Many years of hard work and great expense brought this dwelling into a home. We've raised a family here and enjoyed the convenience of this position. You are forced to walk more due to the close proximity of the shops and restaurants. So we do get a bit of exercise living around here. Um, Edward Street was always a very quiet street on the weekends and it was just an ideal little street because you never felt unsafe. It was. Um, uh, the drunks would walk home from the pub different ways. Very rarely we'd get any trouble down our street at night and it was a very, very uh, nice, quiet little street. Um, not long after we moved there, a large office building was built right next, right on our boundary, which is uh, two storeys tall and it, and it is a big, bricks, a big uh, concrete um, tilt slab. But that's when I learned that commercial owners are given no notice of constructions near them and don't have any avenue of objection like a... Uh, oh, sorry. Is that a sign? Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. But technical. Um, they didn't have any avenue of objection. And we accepted that because we, uh, we knew we were, we were in their space, we were in a commercial space. We weren't, um, we weren't in a residential area, so we accepted that and we lived with it all the time. We enjoyed many years of relative quiet on this street. Can turn them off. Turn that off, Matt. Yeah, turn it off. And, <laughs> that is, and even when the brewery opened um, just down from us, the, um, Still was a nice quiet street because um, the brewery didn't attract bad types. It was um, very well organised, and uh, the only difference we saw was that the parking has become more impossible uh, even on the weekend. Uh, with this planning and design of this, what you're doing, 
uh, we see this compromised with this construction. Many cars, uh, many public car spaces will be lost with the structural support required to hold up this massive building. Building in an L shape, shape brings many entrance and issue, exit issues as well. In reality, with ramps, rubbish spaces, elevators, uh, I, I would guess at least a third of the public parking spaces would be lost, increasing the already congested CBD parking. Many factors over the last few years have, have changed our enjoyment of this house and position. The 4am trading of nightclubs has increased the nighttime noise in the area. Heritage orders have reduced the value of our house dramatically. Um, building the Ace College has blocked out the view we enjoyed. And I don't understand how um, the Ace College was allowed to build in the spot they are on a single house, housing block that's reduced the number of students they can take in in the first place. So I'm, I'm mystified to why, why on all levels of the government given two million dollars to do it and how, the, um, how they didn't oversee or how the council allowed that to happen in such a crowded area. Uh, social housing on our doorstep, doorstep would dramatically change this street and wipe out any value left in our wonderful old house. The multi-storey building would overlook, overlook our backyard, making it feel, feel unsafe in our, back, in our own home. The units have to have windows facing our way and this would be totally unacceptable to us. If we truly want to reduce the homelessness and social inequality in Shepparton, more housing land needs to be made available in the east-west corridors more encouragement to take up the labouring jobs that are going begging at present and buy houses secretly in different areas in a salt and pepper type plan. Um, I'm Janet and I've volunteered with the uh, Youth Haven with the Lighthouse Program and uh, mentoring isolated young mothers and also with the Winter Night Shelter. And I'm only mentioning this because I want you to know that because we're objecting to this building, it does not mean that we don't care about the, um, the homeless. Um, as, a, as a community, and Kim, I'm sure you'll agree, due to the incredible response that you received, we're calling for volunteers for the Winter Night Shelter. The people of our community definitely care about our homeless position. We're objecting on the grounds that this type of development is totally unsuitable for the area and our community as a whole. The building will stigmatise the vulnerable cohort that it's aimed at. We understand the government is throwing money around with the big build scheme and looking for a quick fix to make themselves look good so they can say we've created so many boxes. I mean, houses for the homeless and tick off that box without looking at the long-term effects of the homeless in the community. Um, we also need to be realistic here too. The cohort living here will come with a range of issues. There will be people who have just found themselves in a less than ideal um, situation, which would all, um, unexpectedly happen to anyone. There will also be people with drug, alcohol and mental issues. Issue. Just give a little bit extra time because of that interruption, please, Michael. Putting this cohort all together in a confined space will create a volatile in, in, uh, environment. This sort of housing does not allow for individual housing requirements. If you really care about this cohort, you'll acknowledge that this one size does not fit all and we need to treat the tenants with this house, who this aid housing is aimed at, with respect, empathy and compassion. With the amount of money this build would cost, you could build, buy or renovate existing units and homes throughout the community. Not only in Shepparton, but also Marigna, Tatura and any other surrounding and other surrounding areas where the potential tenants may have families or a support network. This will also alleviate the stigma of living in that building. Um, this planning is socially wrong for the area, wrong for the surrounding business and totally wrong for the major development currently happening in Lord Street. I do hope the council makes the correct decision that reflects the needs of the homeless and the community as a whole in the long run and not just a flawed, quick fix development that will certainly involve more grief, grief and money down the track. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Is there any point of clarification? No? All right, thank you so much for coming in this morning. Really appreciate your time. Thanks, Jan. Thanks, Roger. Thanks, thank Jan. You. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for coming in. Good morning. Firstly, thank you for listening to our submission, uh, which we uh, present uh, regarding the sale of the land for public housing development. And the first point I want to make is that uh, the initial time for debate, as you know, was uh, very brief when it was first advertised, and it was increased due to the lobby from the people of Shepparton who were concerned about the project with uh, such a short time frame for consultation. But Chamber's concerns and projections development is nothing to do about it being specifically public housing. Rather, the concern that we have comes from the fact that any four-storey development on that site would impact on the amenity of the general area. 
Um, but furthermore, in its current format and design, and on completion, it returns a net reduction in car parks for members of the public. And the need for a lift well, the stairwell, car ramps to the next level for parking, as well as the pylons and the other structural supports for any such building, will impact significantly on ground floor car park numbers at this location, regardless of the use of the building. And so it's the Chamber's opinion that this very popular three hour free car park in that location, that no reduction in car parks would be acceptable to the business, the hospitality and the shopping community. As we know, car parks in Shepherd are at a premium. And this one, which so successfully feeds into Friar Street and the Maud Street Mall area, is too valuable to lose a single park. The location of this car park acts as a buffer between the buildings of the CBD and what becomes the start of what I like to call the heritage residential area of Shepparton. And certainly in that area there are medical clinics and offices, but they are in single or two-storey buildings and do not affect the amenity of the immediate or adjacent buildings. And I would like to repeat that a four-storey building of any description in this location would be inappropriate for several reasons. The proposed development would create a loss of amenity to the homes, the businesses and the offices in the immediate area. It would cause significant overviewing of the adjacent properties, one of them of being a school, and it would create overshadowing of much of the nearby buildings, especially the adjacent Ace College, with the resulting impact on any nearby solar panels and natural light into these buildings. The unacceptable loss of car parking has the potential to adversely affect business patronage in the immediate area. And I'd, I'd like, like to hand, hand over to Mark. Thanks, Thanks John. John. Um, uh, look, I, I wish to present the uh, results of an online survey, survey that we did with our members. members. Um, and as, as with all surveys, you know, it'd be difficult to try and get people to complete the survey. Um, um, but we had an overwhelming response. We had 24%, 25% of our membership yeah, jump online and provide feedback, feedback within a couple of days. days. So um, this was... Uh, uh, a significant result from, from, from a survey point, point of view. Um, it was sent to all chamber members, members uh, and the results show an overwhelming 93% rejection of, of the sale of the land, but also a 95% approval for public housing, just not in that site. Um, we have written submissions um, from uh, uh, a lot of business people who have chosen to make further comments. 93% um, of respondents said they did not approve of the sale of the council on land for the development of public housing on that location. 70% um, of respondents either shop or do business within a couple of blocks. 10% uh, of, um, of respondents reside within two blocks. 63% uh, said that they would affect their, it would affect their ability uh, to park for personal use. Um, and 66% said it would reduce the ability for customer car parking. 44% felt it might uh, affect their business revenue. 68% um, felt that it would be detrimental, detrimental impact to surrounding buildings um, with overviewing loss of light and effect on solar panels. 54% um, felt there'd be mediums uh, to significant reduction in revenue and, and patronage. Um, and 75% said there would, there would be an impact on surrounding buildings. Um, and 95% of people that completed the survey felt the development should just be in a different location. Um, so I'll just hand back to Dr. Thanks, Mark. The Chamber understands there is a need for public housing in Shepparton, and we believe that the decision to sell the land to an asset that belongs to the City of Greater Shepparton and therefore the ratepayers is a decision that would be made without rational and objective planning and that the concept is flawed in that location and, and I would therefore urge the Council to reject the planning approval based on the following. The loss of amenity to surrounding buildings including offices, homes and eventually their capital value to the property owners. Inappropriate concentration of emergency and temporary accommodation and location attached to CBD. Potential lack of health and safety of residents of the proposed development with no immediate access to good green space and recreation facilities, overview and overshadowing of media properties, in an appropriate location of a four-storey building in the area that abuts the beginning of the residential heritage precinct, potential loss of trade and patronage to surrounding retail, hospitality, 
The commercial business is due to a 100% loss of car parks during construction and the resulting net loss of car parks ongoing when the project is complete. I therefore urge the Council to reject the application for sale of land next to Morgan Edward Street for the proposed development. Thank you. Thank you so much, John and Michael. Really appreciate you coming in. Thank you so much for your time. Did you have a point of clarification? Clarify. Is that a heritage precinct officially? The, uh, at the junction of Edward and Maud Street, no. No. And what if it was a five star hotel? What if it was a five star hotel, four stories? It's a four story development, so the objection would be the same. Okay. Okay, no other points of clarification? Thank you so much, John and Michael. Oh, okay. oh, sorry. Just wondering if we could have access to those statistics that you've um, yep. mentioned. Yep. Yeah, I can table them right now, Greg, so I can leave them with you. Okay, thanks, John. Thanks, Michael. Um, thank you for hearing me. I'm not against social housing, but in the wrong place and the wrong configuration I am, and this is what's being offered on the proposal side of Nixon, Maud and Edward Street. It's definitely not the best place for all concerned. The community, businesses, the occupants and especially Ace College. We've tried and failed with this type of clustered housing in Packham Street, so why subject a plan like this that will ultimately lead to more social problems and possibly a ghetto in the central business area just after the CDB, CBD is starting to come to life after COVID. We'll soon have a revitalised mall. Why not make the most of it? I've seen firsthand what social housing on multi-levels can do. Until recently, we had an apartment in Abbotsford and we saw the effects of the wrong type of social housing plus an injecting room kill a once thriving community. As an ex-teacher, I'm horrified at the lack of concern for the ACE College, a school you helped find a new home and for and supported. From all reports, if this housing project goes ahead, the school would lose its accreditation and have to close or once again be relocated. I know many of you have not been to see the school, something I encourage you to do to understand why this project on this site is not viable. Many of the children are already at risk and with great guidance and governance are managing to turn their lives around. To me, an 80% retention rate speaks volumes. These children deserve the best and for this is what aid is providing for them. People in social housing deserve green space, yards, safe places that they can call home not cluster housing in the wrong spot. They need a home just like us, an individual home. Why do we have such a need for social housing in Shepparton? 45 million has been allocated for the big bill to Shepparton. Have you a plan for how this money will be spent for the benefit of all? Or are you going to grab the first proposal that comes along without a plan that will benefit few? 45 million could provide many much needed residents. I'm concerned at urban ethos's role. Why weren't they told there was a school next to the proposed site? Why didn't they come to Shepparton and looked at the proposed site? Did you provide them with the information about the site, leaving out important details? I've spoken with a town planner from Richard Wynne's office and he said the project is council driven and feels if it goes ahead, we could see huge mental health issues. Is this what we want? Why gift or sell the land at below a market price? Why was there no consultation before, with the residents, businesses and ACE before it appeared in the paper? To me, there are so many unanswered questions and transparency of this project. My plea to the councillors is that you are elected to represent the people and you are meant to be impartial. Please listen to the people and fully consider all our issues and concerns. I've spoken to many from all walks of life and no one seems to support the project. People support and see the need for social housing in the right area that is beneficial to all. 
please block this development and look to a big plan that is beneficial to all parties concerned so we all benefit from the big build into the future, not just a quick fix to tick a box. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Gwen. Is there any points of clarification? No. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks, okay. Thank you. So you've got three presentations, is that correct? Well, we've got effectively one presentation combined, hopefully. Okay. What we're hoping to integrate is even some dialogue through the process would be the ideal situation. But uh, so who are you representing? I'm representing Shepparton Nose College and Ron's representing the uh, residents for Greater Shepparton. Okay. okay. And then okay. I think we made clear to Michael before we put the slot aside. So first, first I'd like to thank uh, uh, um, the councillors for the opportunity to speak on behalf of ACE College on this vitally important issue. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a local solicitor and I'm also the solicitor for Shepparton Nose College and I'll present their concerns. Uh, Ron has been engaged by the residents of Greater Shepparton to speak on their behalf and we believe there's a synergy between our submissions and that was the reason why we thought there might be some benefit in, in putting them together. Um, I know, I know you've, you'll, you'll have the benefit of our written submissions which go into detail about, about the issues particularly relevant to Shepherd Nose College from my perspective and, and, and uh, for the, the group from Ron's perspective. perspective. And, and as, as indicated before, before it's, it's, it's our, our hope, hope that we can have an interactive discussion on various issues and we certainly encourage any of you to interject at any time and take the conversation where you think it needs to go. So I'm not going to concentrate too much on the minutiae of Shepherd Nose College's issues, a lot of them we already well known. Uh, but I'd, I'd like to weave him into some of the things that Ron has to primarily say. But I do want to make a couple of preliminary comments on behalf of ACE. It is important to start to acknowledge that ACE is very supportive of Council's um, objective to facilitate affordable housing in Shepparton. It aligns perfectly with ACE's objectives, um, which is to assist and support community's most vulnerable people. ACE's objection is not to the project at all, it's to the proposed location given the inevitable and unavoidable impact that the, the development will have on its school. Many of the councillors here may be aware of the, the bit of the history in 2018 where ACE was relocated from uh, its site in Rose Street to the current premises in Maud Street. Um, that was uh, related to the construction of a new uh, Shepparton Fire Brigade facility at that location. Uh, that process was an extensive consultation um, process involving council, both planning and building departments. It involved considerable federal, state and council funds. And in fact, a lot of hard work went in by all parties concerned to find the current location for ACE. The main considerations uh, for, for, both, for both council and ACE at the time was the fact that the, the current location is in the activity centre zone. There was access and use of the existing car park facilities which would overcome parking overlay and traffic issues and the building department were particularly focused on and comfortable with, comfortable with the discharge points and exits from the building and particularly from open spaces to public roads and in particular ref, uh, importance here is the side access which we'll have no doubt heard a bit about and we'll talk about through the submission. The other point I want to make is that ACE as a school uh, has obviously a very high standard of, uh, of obligation. It has a very high duty of care to its students and its staff. It has to protect its students and staff from reasonably foreseeable risk. It must uh, maintain precautions to prevent abuse of children. It must maintain an emergency management plan that addresses um, all emergencies that may occur. Um, it must ensure that it has proper maintenance scheduling for its building uh, and facilities. And most importantly, it must ensure that it complies with all OH&S obligations and a raft of other regulations. It also has an ongoing obligation to report to the Victorian Registration and Qualifications Authority, Authority to maintain its registration. Why am I telling you this? Its biggest fear is that it could lose its registration through this process. Um, and that is certainly something I'd like the councillors to keep in mind as we go through the various aspects of the submission. So at this juncture, I might hand over to Ron to give a bit of a background. They're the major bits for ACE as a, as a bird's eye view, and then I'll interweave some of the, the more uh, relevant things as we go. Thank you. Thank you. Morning, councillors and staff. Um, I guess just to be completely transparent, and for the record, I'm actually a councillor at Wodonga City, so I understand how this all works. And probably of much, much more relevance is I also spent 18 years working inside local government up to director level. 
and post the time in local government I've spent with major or mainly economic development projects, um, inclusive of social housing. Um, I understand how this has to work and how the policy systems are in place. So, um, although we're taking a point of view of not supporting this specific situation, um, we understand thoroughly the need for social housing and how it should be put together and the imperatives that go to making um, social housing successful. And being successful is the critical key component for social housing. Um, I guess the other bit that fits to this, for a council, this type of stuff is, um, next to choosing a, and appointing a CEO, this is probably the single most important thing that the councillors get involved with. This, this is um, managing the mosaic or the jigsaw puzzle, that is the economy, that is land use, and is built form. Um, that's the legacy. Those things are the legacies that councils leave behind. And they can be positive or negative. And it becomes so important that whenever we're making changes to the jigsaw puzzle, we make sure that those changed pieces of the jigsaw also fit back into the broader jigsaw that remains you know, from the start. So. I guess what I'm saying about this is this is a very high level, the way I've taken this approach is a very high level strategic approach to the issues that are associated with this specific um, proposition and how it fits into the central business area or this particular neighbourhood precinct of the central business area. So um, some say urban economics is a dark art, but urban economics in reality comes from an open mind and an inquisitive ability to genuinely make sure that the changes and additions to the mosaic or jigsaw um, fit into all the pieces. So it's, uh, urban economics is the thing that makes a city centre work or makes a municipality work in urban areas. But um, social housing policy is just, it's one very important component of that big jigsaw and, and um, we believe um, and seek to show that this proposal fails council social housing policy and more importantly will fail um, the very people that are in need of social housing as well as fail a neighbourhood. So it's a lose-lose-lose situation. Um, I think there are, from my experience in doing projects like this, there's many other ways and many other locations that can m make this work and work very successfully. Um, I'll just touch on the Ethos Urban Report. Um, I found that quite disappointing. It was, uh, it reached its conclusions in a very narrow bend and very isolated from um, the whole range of things that should have been considered in um, looking at the impacts. Um, it seems they didn't even visit the site to physically understand the environment that this fits into. Um, it unilaterally looks at the cost of construction and alleged accrued benefits with no inclusion of the wider adverse economic impacts. And indeed, even in their report, they say that they accept no liability for decisions made based on the report, which that's usually a pretty good giveaway. Um, and it fails to address the absolute specific site. When you look at the site, it's um, in irregular shape. Uh, it's quite narrow. Um, it's being an L shape, it's um, squeezed, shall we say, in between other land uses and at a fairly close proximity to them. So the impact of all that um, means that it becomes very difficult then to down the track comply with the various statutory and um, good design requirements that go to make up good quality social housing or good quality housing of any sort. So. Um, the ethos report to me looks like a box ticking exercise under direction of a predetermined outcome. And that worries me no end for somebody that's in this business and facilitating the good outcomes. I might just add at this juncture that this is from ACE's perspective, the fact that we're not, ACE wasn't, wasn't even consulted or considered in the report and the negative impact that could happen to the school 
is, is a, is a, a is fatally, fatally flawed. I mean, it, that, that report should have reported to councillors on the impact so, so he could assess the positive, positive versus negative. negative. Um, social and affordable housing needs to be much more than simply a roof over the head of the most disadvantaged. Um, if all we're going to do is aggregate uh, people in need of social housing uh, into uh, designs and positions that aren't naturally um, appropriate for that sort of design, uh, for that sort of outcome, what we finish up with is an exaggerated and um, a, a version of the same problems that we're trying to solve. And we finish up with a whole range of other things that, um, I mean, I spoke about it in more detail in the submission, which I'd encourage, encourage you to go and have a look at, but if you haven't read it already. And, and what we need to be able to do is to um, create good living environments rather than aggregating people in need of social housing. Just, it, it's, it's, almost, um, it's almost a situation where if it's not done to create good living environments, then it becomes a, um, uh, a type of philanthropic elitism. We've got to do good for these poor people. Um, but in effect, the outcome becomes counter to policy and counter to good outcomes and in fact can multiply down the path into um, exaggerating the problems that we faced in the first place that we were trying to fix. Um, so it's really important to provide a good living environment. Um, aggregating socially, economically or physically disadvantaged people in a poor living environment just magnifies, con concentrates and entrenches the disadvantage. Um, history tells us that aggregation in the manner that seems to be proposed. And, and the reason I say seems to be proposed, we can't go into the detail and do a formal legal and structural assessment of an application because there isn't one before us at this point, and probably neither there should be. This should be part of the process at a strategic level. So to look at the, um, the clause 5507 components of the planning scheme, for example, or, or the apartments good design guide, we can look at it at a strategic level but we can't look at it specifically in respect to what this proposal is because there just isn't enough detail in it to do so. Um, having said that, there are many things that come out of um, the strategic level that suggest it will be nigh on impossible to actually meet the good design, apartment good design guidelines or um, many of the things that are put up in clause 5507 for apartments. There's, without having it in front and going line by line through it, there's so many things that it makes this proposal just untenable. Um, urban economics tells us that social housing should be a natural fit and not forced or constrained by location. And when I referred to the shape and, and size um, and, and squeezed in position of the um, actual site, those things go to make constraints um, on the location, um, which means that it then becomes very difficult to go and meet those um, requirements at a statutory level or a good design level. The fundamental thing is people living in social housing have a right, to, right like everyone else, to be integrated into a supportive community free from aggregation peer or unsavoury behaviour pressures with, free, um, with freedom within a good living environment. These people need to be able to build their lives and have freedoms of choice just like anybody else, um, but with the support of the social housing concept and the social housing policy outcomes. Um, I, I guess going across to the strategic urban planning issues, Urban planning has a principal objective of maintaining separation of conflicting uses and integrating appropriate activities. Um, the separation of conflicting uses, by and large, you, you can't come out and say all residential development should be kept out of a central business area. Equally, you can't come out and say all business should be kept out of a residential area. But there's a, there's a spectrum and a, and a common sense and a 
a um, application of principle and on merit um, process that should be applied in determining how all these things fit together. And when you look at um, putting uh, social housing into a commercial area where it's constrained because of the nature and location of the site, because it's constrained because of the socio-economic um, determinants of the area within which it's going. For example, the location of this site is in one of the, um, the most productive and burgeoning commercial parts of the Shepparton CBD. And we have uh, a very strong growth in bus small businesses, which is, let's be frank about it, Shepparton's been um, a little bit constrained with economic stuff in the centre of the city for a good number of years. And I, my observation is that this um, part of, or quadrant of the central business area has been one of the key bits that started to, to lift the um, economic activity in the central business area. Um, in addition to the commercial businesses that have come there, the commercial businesses have strengthened um, and probably instigated a fairly strong hospitality sector that is located around it. Now that hospitality sector is targeting a specific market, as are the businesses that are there, and that specific market um, establishes uh, some um, demographics, demographics and so on that generate success. success. If, if we, we come, come in and um, impose within, within a constrained environment, environment uh, a, a demographic that doesn't fit to that, then it has flow-on negative effects to the development that's already there and to the, to the way it's been growing. So it's not, a, it's not an elitism or it's not a thing that says, oh, we can't have poor people. It's, it's looking at the realities of the economics and urban economics. And, and no matter what we think about urban economics, it's going to happen. That political correctness and urban economics are poles apart. Um, urban, urban economics will happen. You just can't say that it won't happen. Um, we, we might not, not like, like some of the outcomes, outcomes that come about from pure economics, but, it, but, that's, but that's the reality we face. Um, there's a long-term risk to take an ill-considered opportunity simply because grant funding might be available or that it might be politically or socially correct at the time. So again, that comes back to the urban economics and a whole range of other things. If we don't do these things in a proper way, an integrated way into the community so that we get the, the support and structures that come naturally out of um, good design, good location choice, and then we finish up with the downsides. And it's really easy to create a ghetto, but it takes a little more thought and effort to create healthier living environments and healthier communities. And what I'm saying here is because of the constraints on this, we are able to actually put those things in place. Um, okay, we're almost out of time, so we're just about done. We'll yep. Um, there's, there's a whole range of things that you can go through. Um, base points with respect to the, the combining, um, the conflicting um, uses in the, in the region. Um, obviously, whether it's a, a four-storey affordable housing complex, or whether it's a four-storey mantra, it, it doesn't make any difference to us. The reality is the reality. You cannot have overshadowing. You cannot have balconies looking into a, uh, into a school. You cannot have a building which, in effect, locks the exit point for the students in the event of a, an emergency. That school was being built in a way that would bottleneck um, evacuation through the front door, and it was done in consultation so that the exits could occur through as well the side door. We have a building four stories over that, 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 that building happens to be on fire, we have a major problem. Well, that's not to mention the construction period, the noise, the, the, uh, the dust, the impact on the school will be absolutely dramatic. No, 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 no other way of looking at that. Um, there are social issues associated with you know, large volumes of residents living next door to the school. They're a very vulnerable level age group. 13 to 17, there are kids that have, that have struggled to get through the system, and to place a housing, uh, affordable housing project next to that will create its own social, social issues. 
There, there are, are other issues such as, 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 as potential um, uh, uh, impact on the solar panels. panels. Uh, the school got a grant of $50,000 to put solar panels, panels on it. On it. Um, if, if it's, it's overshadowed in their block, block that's, that's wasted. wasted. The school got a, uh, uh, funding to put up a screen, screen to exhibit to the community what they're doing. doing. Yes, yes, you can move the screen, but I'm not sure where. But ultimately, that would be lost. So, so there, there are, are some very specific and direct impacts upon Pace College. And there's there. one, one thing that Bronwyn said to me when we read through the executive summary. And that says that in terms of the council's view of the affordable site, it says the sites. Ideal, ideal location, location with the Shepparton and CBD, CBD will ensure excellent amenity for future residents, and enabling to them to secure and appropriate housing, and also thrive, to thrive in the community with access to all the services and support they require. That paragraph is perfect for ACE. That's why they picked that site. They wanted those kids in the CBD to have a sense of purpose, to be able to feel like they're not stuck down the back in Rose Street. They're there now, they're loving it, and they feel and this is the voice I want to give them. They feel like that the social affordable housing concept is being put above them and at their expense. So for their, their point of view, they support the project, just not here. All right, we might just finish it up there. We have a couple of points of clarification from the councillors. Do you have a question? Uh, yeah, just um, playing devil's advocate, just in regards to accreditation. You're saying that if anything looks over a school then it won't be accredited. How, how does that apply in Melbourne? I mean, just as devil's advocate, the exit can be moved, but how would they lose their accreditation just by the sheer fact that there's a larger building next to them? No, I don't think that, I, I wouldn't take it as far as that. What I would say is there are ongoing obligations with respect to safety um, and, and um, the, the way in which the school- uh, Specifically though, for accreditation, what is the thing that would make them lose it, other than the exit, potentially? Other than the exit? Yes. Um, well, I, th I think it's really the exit, the primary one. Okay. Um, uh, issues associated with um, with the uh, overshadowing and, and, and balconies looking into the school, I don't think of themselves would be enough. I think it would be, it would be a combination of a number of, of I mean, that would be a matter for the organisation, the authority to, to review, but they would have an obligation to report to them to say, well, this is what's happening. This, this, this is going to be built next door to us. Um, so in answer to your question, Fred, I don't think that of itself would be enough in terms of the overshadowing or the, or the over, overlooking. But when you combine the whole lot of it together, it's, 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 it's a concern. Mm. Okay, any other points of clarification, Councillor Brophy? Thank you. Um, Rick, certainly understand who you're representing. That's terrific. Ron, I'm not really clear as to who you're representing today. And you said residents of Shepparton, or the Greater Shepparton. Uh, who are you actually representing? Okay. Um, on the back of the sheet that was originally submitted as the submission, there's a whole bunch of names that are the people, and they've, they've been led um, by Robin Ags. Um, but there's a whole bunch of people that have signed it. Um, yeah, it's not on the, the documents that we've got. Oh, sure. That's okay, we can follow that up. Thanks. Anything else, Ray? Uh So, sorry, is, it, is just in, they're individuals or is it a, an actual set group? Um, it's a group that's been actually meeting. Um, how, I don't think they've turned themselves into a incorporated organisation or anything, but they've actually been meeting and they've actually been keeping minutes um, of the meetings they've had. They've had conversations about all of these things. Um, I must say, um, I probably should have said it earlier, but this group is looking to um, offer assistance with, to council to try and support um, an alternative to what's been proposed where we can actually meet the policy outcomes that have been set in place. They're, they're happy to put their collective weight behind um, doing some work to help out there if they can. Um, be very happy to have a more um, fundamental conversation with council in due course to, to try and facilitate that. Um, there's uh, one, two, 14 25 signatures on the document. I can get a copy of that later, that'd be great. Thank you. I can produce this to you now if you like. 
Okay. Yeah, through Michael would be great. Okay, so it's one of the submission one of the staff. 107 or 17. So there were two different submissions. The one that we're referring to here is 107. Is 117 on our running yes, sheet. Yes, there are two separate submissions. The one that's being discussed at the moment is 107. Right, we can yeah, see we've it. seen it. I've seen it, bro. Yes. Okay, is there any other points of clarification before we finish up? No? Thank you so much for coming in, Rick. Yes. Really appreciate your time. Thank Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. This is all about the children. Who are the most important people in this crucial community struggle over the fate of the car parks and the school right next door? The only possible answer is the children. It is therefore important to hear from and about the children and young people of Shepherd and Ace Secondary College. Our students are the experts in the struggle for their school, central to everything that we do now and in the future because the children are that future. They are so passionate about causes. They are funny and full of energy, ideas, enthusiasm, and hope for that future. And they constantly amaze us with their strength as they live in such difficult times, including two years of pandemic lockdowns that interrupted their schooling and their life. No good deed done for these children will ever be wasted. Council has previously placed this school under enormous pressure and stress. And as a school community, we rose to that challenge. We found a safe street and a safe site in which the children and young people could thrive, in which their aspirations could grow. And how shocking to this same school community, less than a year after we moved to that safe site, that we are faced with another challenge with real potential to risk the health, safety, well-being and educational outcomes of the children, or indeed close the school. How could this have occurred without any thought for the children? This serious question is one that parents, carers, the community and the students themselves have been asking. These children and young people are not a mere point on a Google map. Our school has a direct measure of income score of 77, one of the lowest in Australia. What this actually means is that most of our families are struggling financially now more than ever. But at Shepherd and Ace Secondary College, the fees are very low and parents are not asked to pay for any extras such, such as uniform, uniform, we don't have one, books, vet courses, sport or camps, to name a few. This, this makes, makes a huge, huge difference to the stress on families that sometimes leads to children not attending school at all. We know what a real difference this school has made to countless families, children and young people over a long period. Recently, we've had the pleasure of showing many visitors through our Sunfield Yard and classrooms and we have felt so proud that our students are genuinely engaged in their learning are friendly to our visitors and the classrooms are calm and pleasant. The positive relationship students have with their classroom teachers shone through. We model prevention in action. We also stand strong with our students. We stand with their families. We stand with our local community. Shepparton has enough heart to have both a small school for many vulnerable learners and social housing in an appropriate place. Thank you, Bronwyn. Thank you. Any points of clarification, councillors? Thank you for coming in today, Bronwyn. Thank you. I'll just... Um, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, just discuss the opportunity at hand. Obviously, it's a, it's a big topic um, and, uh, and it needs to be analysed very well. And I do appreciate the opportunity, like others that have uh, had a chance to sort of express our thoughts on it. I'm in real estate, of course, and I just wanted to sort of uh, iterate sort of what, what I love in my job is, is, uh, is, is the opportunity to facilitate a purchaser's needs and you have a good outcome for that need. Quite often we have agents or, or an agent that might 
uh, sell something to a purchaser that's not the appropriate site and you know that it's not going to get up in planning or you know it's not going to suit. So a good agent would reflect on and listen to the needs of the customer and try and facilitate and make sure that they will get a happy outcome and an outcome with longevity that will suit their needs and suit their family or suit their business. We'll get through planning and all of the above. And that's, and that's the part I thoroughly enjoy in real estate. I like to listen and, uh, and, and observe and then act on something that's going to be proactive and, and, a, and a good outcome for both sides. And I can just look at this site and I look at the needs and, and there's, no, there's no greater need. And no, I don't think anyone walking in the room today and talking in the general public are objecting to the need to facilitate. We are all on the same page with that. We need to facilitate for housing, for all levels of housing, and particularly the, 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 the people in need of, of beyond housing. So we're in the game to um, assist in every shape or form. And even the, the good Samaritans in the, in the street are all wanting that outcome. I just can't understand why we're focusing on this site where it has a better use for the CBD than the, and, and, and there's other opportunities that will facilitate a better outcome for beyond housing. And we can take time to do that if you can buy time. And that's what I would like councillors to understand and buy time, to have an outcome that's going to have longevity 20 or 30 years into the future. We will need car parking at a greater use than it is today. And I know that all our developers, that when they go and present something to planning, they have to contribute significantly to, ha to provide for car parking to get their permit through. If they can't provide it on site, they pay a significant outcome, significant money to provide for car parking. Now in 20 or 30 years, as new councillors during the day, we'll be sitting down saying where we're going to grow this CBD car parking need because all of a sudden there's extra demands on that facility. So it could be going under the ground or could be going above ground on that existing site that you've got. Why would you sell it for the future development of car parking? And that's my biggest tick. It's in the best. You've created it. Why would you lose it? And why would you lose the need to grow it and improve it in years to come? Where it is the gateway to the CBD, the best thing we have done, I think, is opening up that walkway and, and the mall will create more activity for retail spend. And, and this particular development will not improve that uh, in the, the customer service for restaurant trade and retail spend. So that's where I think this is, is, is the ideal site to hold and save and create a bigger and better outcome. Obviously with planning, if, we, if in our office if we make a decision to try and buy something or, or facilitate a, a need and we haven't done our, done our due diligence on what that outcome will be, it'll be, it'll be uh, thinking for the purchaser that, that, and something will come up whether it's an easement or whether it's a, whether it's a need that won't, won't get up in, in planning, we would, uh, we, would, we would pass that information on to the purchaser of the day to understand that this is there and that's there and, and this might be an issue with your future plans. And I would have thought that even the due diligence for this four or five storey development would have had a clear look at the ACE building next door, which we were all involved in the room at creating. And here we are with a wonderful facility. I really do feel for the longevity and that, that excellent service that's being delivered and created, what, that, uh, what that's going to be, that's going to jeopardise. You can't deny that it's going to not jeopardise their, their, their operational. And, in, and as it's planned, it's been planned for the exit strategy onto the car park. It's been planned for visitors to, uh, it was given the green light because of car parking was adjoining. And, uh, and I think the planners of the day, with uh, the draft drawings that I saw, can still see it as a dormant, uh, dilapidated uh, residential address, which was the original use, which was the, which was the, um, the morgue, of course. I'm sure if we had a plan, if they had observed that, uh, that well, if I was presenting this four lot of, of, of development to the council, I would be denied, I think, of a planning permit to, to jeopardise that existing use next door. And we don't want to jeopardise the ACE bill. I think it's, it's, it's a good feel when you walk through there. The northeast aspect of it, you can see kids in need that are, that are thriving under those conditions, and you're going to, to jeopardise that learning facility. Um, they will be relocating somewhere else if we do get this planning permit up. So I'd like to, to once again uh, you know, focus on the, the voting of a no for the sale of that product to, 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 uh, to avoid jeopardising the ACE school facility. 
And I just think it's neat, we need to understand that it's not the only site. And there's other sites that we, if we bought more time that we could create that would be more flavourable for the beyond housing needs. Like I think we need security, I think we need access to the bush walks, we need walking distance or, or bus. We've got wonderful bus facilities that will drive people into the CBD and, and I think there's plenty of sites around if you have a look. Archer Street, next to the, 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 which is something the council owns now, is uh, 345 to 349 Archer Street. It's 5,000 square metres and it's in a good site opposite some shops, in front of car parking, walk to the bush. They would have an, a great lifestyle if they were created in that site. No, I'm not saying they, I'm saying that whoever knew the age or the young or the mums that need, need care, uh, there, is a, there is a wonderful site for this facility to go straight there, cancel owns it, apply it and, and away you go. The other site is the Mason Street site that I'd like you to consider. Goulburn Valley Water owned it at the moment. It used to be a shire depot and that is a good facility, a good, it's a dormant facility, sitting there with already car parking access. I understand that there's some permit activity with a long-term lease for housing and needs for housing, but they would sell about 5,000 square metres. I've had a talk to the people at Golden Valley Water, and that's another site that we could consider, realigning the boundary, keeping their pump station, and providing a wonderful site, whether you could do single level or the four-storey level, overlooking council parkland already, and access to the bush. We need to get mental health spot on, and that site would be a way better site than the current site you're looking at to, uh, to um, put our, our people in need of safety and, and, and a longevity mentally when you're going to be in the suburbia, in their traffic. People don't want to be under the lights, shining under the lights, lights with their special, special needs. needs. They, they need, need to be in a safe environment, environment where they can take ownership, ownership have purpose, and walk like everyone else and integrate with the community, with the community in, in the best part of Shepparton. And that's what they deserve. Mason Street, Street would tick the box for this facility to grow and prosper. I just want you the councillors to all consider voting no for the start of the car park and let's get some more people in the local room to really facilitate an A-grade site for this outcome because we all are on the same page with servicing their needs. Servicing the needs for community housing and for the AIDS facilities. Thank you, thanks for, uh, thanks thanks for listening. I've got a couple of councils that might have a couple of points of yes. clarification to Council Summer. Yeah, as a real estate agent, is it the social housing <clears throat> aspect that bothers you or the fact that it's a multi-storey building in the CBD? Uh, what's your opinion on high density living in the CBD in general? All the research I read um, is, is it's not the right facility for social housing. I'm not asking about social housing. How do you feel about high density in the CBD as a, as a, as a direction? High density living of all kinds. High density living of residential within the CBD? Yes. Uh, about three years ago, we had a meeting in this office and, and some agents were asked to come and talk to town planners and, and they were asking to get some residential development within the mall. And the, and the CBD, and I thought it's a great idea, but you've got to have access to the to the home side. You've got to have a safe access. Now that the now that the slow traffic can come through that mall, you'll see wonderful opportunities for CBD residential development on top of airspace or on top of existing titles within the CBD community. So you will get natural growth now that that CBD has been opened up with traffic flow. Uh, you'll get people that will not, wouldn't have, wouldn't have secured a CBD site for residential without that safe aspect. So there will be other opportunities. There will be other opportunities, even for social housing, to be up in in, in, in the CBD in the mall itself. There will be windows of opportunity to present. Um, and and, there's, and, there's, and it's going to be close enough for social housing to be within Mason Street. Social is close enough for social housing, in my opinion. To, to actually really, th for them to really enjoy their, uh, their, their lifestyle. I can just picture that site being way more user friendly for social housing than on the corner of Nixon Street. Okay, anyone else? No? All right, Kevin, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for listening. Appreciate Cheers. it. Thank you, Kevin. Bye. Okay. So, so first of all, thank, thank you for allowing me to speak here on this important topic. topic. It is a topic which concerns a great many in this community. And going by the amount of people who have reacted to this sudden proposal, it seems that there is a large volume of voices that wish to be heard. These voices are the voices of ratepayers, and they have the right to be recognised, 
acknowledged and sincerely considered. There are several points that I consider need close scrutiny, and while going through these points, I want to assure you that my comments are in no way meant to be disparaging in regard to social housing. ACE College is an established institution. It provides an education for disadvantaged students who are otherwise disengaged from the system. These students deserve the opportunity to be guided through life and educated, just like everybody else. They do not need to have any further disruptions to their life, which is already challenging enough. This is what ACE does. It provides the safe environment for the students and it focuses on positive educational experiences that may not be accessible to them elsewhere. The ACE College has already been forced out of previous premises and it would not have been an easy task to relocate. However, they did it and the college has only been in the current location for a short time. The new premises is a purpose designed building, one that is environmentally friendly in design. It has a northerly aspect, which is something that should be embraced wherever possible for all buildings. But the proposed four-storey development will not only block out the natural light, but it will also negate the efficacy of the solar panels that are currently in situ. Natural light is a necessity for a positive study environment, and without it, there is a detrimental effect on mental well-being. Creating shadows instead of allowing the light to filter through has a negative effect on the entire ambience of any area that has a constant stream of foot traffic. It has been well documented that in an environment where the population reside and work in tall buildings without sufficient natural light, anxiety and depression is much higher. This results in what is known as SAD, Seasonal Affective Disorder. The type of depression that occurs when a lot of hours are spent in a gloomy environment, sapping energy, causing mood swings, and experiencing a foggy brain that makes it difficult to concentrate and focus. This would affect the ability of students to learn. Research has discovered that people who have experienced this condition often find that their energy reverts to a more normal state if they can manage to relocate to a sunnier disposition. Retaining the natural northern sunshine is a must for the common good of all. It's a no-brainer. The proposed structure will block the fire escape and that in itself creates an extra stress for students. These students do not need any unnecessary extra stresses in their life. Added to that would be the length of time that it would take for the structure to be completed. Think about how much noise and distraction this is going to mean for the students, students who are already mostly struggling. This is no short-term project, so it will be drawn out. An interruption will occur regularly to the study environment. There will be some of those students, a lot of them, who will not cope over such a long term with all that distraction and noise and interruption. As it stands, this proposal is not just going to negatively impact the college, but also the central business district. After the recent harrowing couple of years, the CBD is just starting to regain footing. And we know how vital it is to keep this area thriving. Small businesses need local support now more than ever. If this development proceeds, there is a very real risk that many small businesses in this vicinity will suffer and perhaps even disappear for good. The fact that this proposed structure will be eliminating car spaces will lead to a downturn in numbers that visit the CBD, resulting in less revenue being spent there. These car spaces are needed for the already established residents and local businesses, all of whom are ratepayers. With such a tall structure, surely the students will lose their sense of privacy, causing them to feel insecure. And this needs to be taken into serious consideration, given that the development will overlook the playground and the outdoor classroom area. 
Nobody is disputing the need for social housing. So that's a moot point. Everybody, absolutely everybody, deserves to have a roof over their heads. And everybody deserves the opportunity to be able to reside in dignified premises and to feel safe in their own home. Social housing is essential, but not in this location. ACE is already established and the students are settled. To think that the council have announced this proposal without prior consult with local residents, businesses or ACE itself is unthinkable, unjust and perhaps could even be considered a bit underhand. However, with careful planning and good design, this proposal could proceed and fill all criteria, but in a location that does not impinge on the current ACE College. And finally, it would bode well if Council could confirm or deny the rumour that there may be a revised set of plans, plans for a three-storey building. If this is the case, then perhaps those plans could be released to the public so a fair and equitable debate could ensue and proper protocol followed. Thank Amen. you, Maggie. Thank you so much. Is there any point of clarification? No? Thank you so much for coming in, Maggie. Really appreciate it. Oh, you're so welcome. Thanks, Maggie. Thanks, Maggie. Um, we support the principle of bringing people back into the centre of Shepparton to revitalise the CBD, be central to services and limit urban sprawl. The proposed site meets these principles. The uh, social housing for a select group in the CBD would be a win-win. Many tenants do not have access to personal travel options. They would be closest to the services they require and given, given the, uh, the site would hopefully have more support on that site than spread around. It will also assist the invigoration of the CBD. It's going to limit urban sprawl and not have adverse impact on land availability within the, uh, the urban area. Terry, do you want to carry on yours and I'll come back if we have time? Uh, that's right. But I don't know about carry on, John, but anyhow, I'll continue on. Look, uh, most of the uh, engineering aspects around, you know, I imagine the, some uh, details there that would come in, like access and all that, overshadowing and all those sorts of things, all those things can be overcome with prudent design, right? And I'm pretty sure you can do that. Uh, in fact, I'm not pretty sure, I you know you can do that, even privacy issues. So if we can overcome that by smart design, we can even make this, this building uh, top class as far as energy savings, garden on the roof, uh, you know, rooftop garden or whatever, it can be really a, uh, a situation which will enhance the area, enhance what we think about uh, these sort of people. So from an engineering point of view uh, and all that, we can do that. So then we're down to, it's those people we talk about, those people that are going to so-called occupy the space. And I think what we've got is whatever 1,500 homeless here at the moment, we've got 800 dwellings we need in the town. But our growth area of homelessness is um, women between 45 and 65 that for no reason of their own, they're either out of work, can't get back into work. COVID's had a bigger part in that as well. They haven't got the superannuation that we uh, with men would normally have. They're also in a situation where they're looking after children, potentially grandchildren in broken homes, as this is going to get worse. So really, I think if we all think about, do we know someone like that? Mental health, for argument's sake. And I think you'd probably all acknowledge that you do know someone that's in that situation. And if you don't, you're very, very lucky or you don't know many people, right? I don't know what that actually means. So all I'm saying is we can do this, prudent design. The developers have done it before. One of them is in Frankston, and, and it's a great facility, welcomed by the community. I think you've got to be courageous here and, and approve this so that we can move forward and make a statement. We've all got to share a little bit in the future here. We've all got to give a little bit. We can't be too selfish in all this. We've got a social divide now that's wider than ever between the haves and the have-nots, and we've got to do something about that because it goes to the very basis of our, of our values here. So I encourage you all to be courageous and vote yes for this proposal. John, did you want to finish off? Just one, one reminder. 
we went through virtually this with the Shepparton skate, skate Park. There was enormous pressure to have it put down on the river somewhere out of, out of sight because of many similar reasons that we're, we're facing with this. And I, I would point to that skate park as being one of the best decisions ever made. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, precinct there and uh, none of the so-called problems that were, were being thrown around have eventuated. So we've just got okay, some, um, we're open to questions. Sure, just some points of clarification. So, Sam? No, no, no. Um, I didn't know the skate park example. That was the first I, I did. I don't know that history, so anyway, mm -hmm. interesting. Any other points of clarification? No. All right, well, thank you very much for coming in, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Jerry, thanks for all the Thanks, thanks boys. <laughs> you did do a good job. <laughs> Firstly, can I thank all the councillors for allowing the opportunity to speak to my submission. Um, on the proposed sale of land, and I will say the land, 5 Edward Street, 115 to 121 Maud Street and 92 Nixon Street, Shepparton, for the purpose of development of social housing. I write the submission in an objection to the sale or the gift of council land or council airspace and the proposed development for social housing on this site. While I understand the need for public or social housing in Shepparton, and I just have to say that I lived in public housing for 11 of my years when I came over from England, went to a migrant camp in Melbourne, into Shepparton and lived in public housing until I got married. So I do understand the issues surrounding the need for affordable and um, accessible public housing, community housing and social housing. But I don't believe that building a four-storey high-rise development in this area is in the best interest, safety or well-being of the proposed future social housing tenants. Safe, or it would also adversely impact on the surrounding neighbourhood, which is already well-developed with many well-established businesses, residences and a secondary college which will be directly next door to this four-storey building. It will also severely reduce public car parking. I make my objections on the following grounds but not necessarily in this order of importance. The impact on parking. Parking in this area is already at capacity. And, and I understand firsthand because my hairdresser is in Ward Street. And when I visit my hairdresser sometimes, I have to go around the park, around the, 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 the block, about two times. Particularly when there's a church service, a wedding, a funeral, or a special event at St Augustine's Church, also in Ward Street. The significant loss of parking spaces at the public car park due to the proposed development will also have a detrimental impact on those living and working in Ward Street, in Nixon Street and in Edward Streets. This area is already highly developed. It has houses, businesses, and those businesses are retail, commercial, professional, medical and kindergarten. Works on the site will severely reduce car parking spaces, such as the need to construct footings and pillars needed for the four-storey building and spaces to include such things as a fire escape, lift or lifts, a designated area for rubbish bins for the tenants' apartments and room for the garbage trucks to manoeuvre if they're going to do it on site. When the building commences, the car park will need to become a construction site for a long period of time and it will be closed to the public. I'm being told that this could take between 12 and 18 months, if not more. That area will be closed off and it will become a construction site. The noise, the extra traffic, including trucks, cranes, will adversely impact and inconvenience the neighbouring properties, including ACE, the secondary college located next door. The impact on the ACE secondary college as well as the serious impacts during the, the construction phase of this multi-level building, the 100 students who attend this school and the teachers will be severely impacted on its proposed scale and size. 
the this will cause overshadowing and loss of natural light and overlooking into the school, causing major privacy and security issues, as well as loss of amenity where they now have open space, sky and trees. The principal of the A school told me that the school will not be able to comply with the legislation to provide a safe learning environment. The students will be impacted by the distractions of what is happening next door. These children have learning issues, which is why they are at that school. They are located there because of the car park. If you stand outside in the car park and look up, as I have done on numerous times, and envisage that building being there, four storeys high, you will see the impact it will have. So the proposed social housing development tends to accommodate, intends to accommodate older, vulnerable people in close proximity, in fact, on the same site, to other vulnerable people, including young people with complex needs. I believe there has not been enough research conducted on the social impact this will have on the well-being and safety of those tenants and whether this proposal is in their best interests. There is limited recreational areas and the closest green open space for the enjoyment of the tenants is Queen's Gardens, which will be difficult to reach for those with mobility problems, as well as having to cross a very busy road. The Greater Shepherd and Affordable Housing Strategy 2020 outlined how Council could assist in the provision of affordable housing, which included social housing. The strategy stated in part, different types of affordable housing will be required to fulfil the needs of the variety of people who need it. Where possible, affording housing will be pepper potted through existing and new residences rather than being concentrated in a specific location. A key direction of the strategy is to encourage affordable housing to be integrated into surrounding neighbourhoods. Does that mean that's I can right, finish? Just, you can finish where you are, that's fine. Keep going, Jeanette. Uh, I, I commend council, council for seeking, seeking solutions, solutions for people who are homeless, but, but I believe that there are more suitable and appropriate sites, sites for council to consider rather than the subject site. site. So, so I urge councillors to reject the proposal to sell or gift subject land, land or airspace, retain, retain it as a public park, and, and seek other, other options to accommodate our homeless and vulnerable people. Thank, thank you for your time. Thank you, Jeanette. Is there any points I of clarification that the councillors need? No? Thank you so much for coming in, Jeanette. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you, Jeanette. Um, so, my name is Marion Langford and I'm a resident of Wood Street and a community member just three houses down from the set our parks that we're talking about. I want to thank the opportunity to speak today. I also want to acknowledge that I agree that there is a need for housing, more affordable housing in the area. However, that's not what we're about today. Um, and so I would like to strongly project the sale or part sale of the land at Dixon Ward and um, Edward Street, and I'm nervous, and no, that's all right. the thinking of airspace. Um, I don't believe that's the way we need to go, and I think we can do better. I know we've got technology issues, so I've gone with boards. Um, I believe that the position, the location, and the site is not the right site for this type of development, and it's the wrong type of development as well. Um, it's a very constrained site. Um, the shape of the building, the fact that ACE is next to it and it will be overshadowing it, I don't believe is the right thing for the ACE College or the tenants that we are planning to put in there. I think we can do much better in Shepparton to look after those people that definitely have a need. Um, so I do believe we can do better. Again, four storeys versus two. Schoolyard bullying. These kids are from disadvantaged backgrounds and they've already experienced schoolyard bullying to the point that that's really challenged them. One student took a year and a half to get up to her regular cohort standard because she was able to get the right kind of um, help, etc. They've had bullying, so having a building that overpowers them and overwhelms them by two storeys 
I believe is another form of bullying. And I, as a parent, and I know how many in this room are parents, I would be concerned about my child's safety in that school ground. Um, and also for the fire escape. I've been there, I've stood in that yard, I've watched them come out with the car park there and the building on top of it, that's gonna make it very challenging for their situation. Aesthetics. This is not Sam building. This is not the law courts. This is out of harmony with this particular area. The aesthetics are totally shattered. Um, Sam and the law courts are statement buildings and they bring tourism, maybe not the law courts, but it has a very strong statement to our community about the, the values that we live by. And Sam is really important. If we put something with no green space that's four, two storeys higher than anything in that area that you can see, it's going to stand out like a sore thumb. And unfortunately, those little concrete boxes, those people will be ostracised. And I fear for their safety as well. So I don't believe it is in harmony with the planning and the development of our area. And I also just want to take a step back to acknowledge this council in moving ACE to that property. They have nestled in to a great location and they are doing fabulous things. You only have to talk to the principal, the parents at I've done, and the students. And it's really a fantastic opportunity to get these kids back on their feet and they are doing it. Um, so well done for you. Let's not disrupt that and let's do better elsewhere for those that do need it. And we're on board, I'm on board. Please don't block their light. That is aspirational. Not, not everyone here I know has been in that courtyard, but when you look out and you see that beautiful Shetland blue sky all along that side there, it lifts your spirits, absolutely lifts your spirits. And that's something that the teachers and have seen in these students is they're aspirational. So they've come from backgrounds that are challenged, that don't have, the poor father that I met the other day with his daughter, he didn't have front teeth but he was so proud of his daughter. He was willing to stand up there and be filmed because he's proud of what his daughter's been able to achieve. She's the one that's now caught up to her cohort and doing well. So please don't block their light. This is their aspiration. This is what you've actually created for them, aspiration. I have to speak about the businesses and the community. I'm part of, it is a community there in Nixon, Maud, Friar Street. It's just getting back on its feet after COVID. And that's really important. It's so fragile though. If we, we've already got the development going on in the mall, there's so much activity there. Now we don't want to lose those car spaces because they are critical to our future development of this particular area. The businesses I've been around and I've spoken to them, there's four that will relocate, two may not reopen. And then the owners of the properties that are renting those spaces to them are going to be challenged to actually rent them out again. Don't want another high street. This is something we can do differently to support these businesses and yet still support these people that desperately need help. And I'm willing to be part of that help in change. I'm prepared to speak out. Just as I'm a community member now, speaking out on behalf of all those that live around me, including the students and the businesses. It's really important. I have a little plinth out the front of my yard and that's there as a community seat. I could have built over it to make it more safe for me, but no, the children from the daycare centre that's right next to me sit on there. They walk along there as my little son used to do when he was a kid and I left it there so he could have that experience. There are elderly people up and down Maud Street all the time. They stop and rest. Even the council workers in the daycare centre sit there and have their lunch. Um, the chemist around the corner had a breakfast there the other day. And yes, the Friday and Saturday night revelers, which will be even closer to that development, stop there for their last fusion of their drinks. And they drop them in the yard and they go, okay, well, there we go. Um, it's about community and I am very much a community person. So I'd just like to finish with your vote actually does community count. And this community counts. And I, when I say this community, yes, it's the businesses, yes, it's ACE, yes, it's the residents in that area. And it is also the community that don't have that community. And we have to create something that's better for them. That's what's really needed. 
something that they can get on the ground. Not, I would be horrified if my parents had have come across times where they needed that and then had to get in a lift with other people that are challenged by other circumstances and their safety. That would be really scary. I would not like that to happen to my family. It is our community, all of it, and we all need to work together, and I'm sure there is a better way that we can do that. There is space, and you will have lots of people wanting to be part of that. Stop the sale, stop the gifting. Let's think about this. We've got a whole community that want to support and help these people. Your vote really does count, and we are fragile in this moment. So I thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, they are, that's my PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone has a question, I would be very happy to take it. Thank you, Marion. Um, Fern? Very creative PowerPoint, love that, thank you. Lots of effort. Um, but I've heard a couple of the shape of the building and you mentioned that yourself. What yes. specifically about the, the L shape itself? Well, the, the shape, because it's going to have to occupy the whole area. So that whole north side will completely shadow, overshadow the school. So sunlight more so than the fact that it's an L shape? It's a constrained space. By the time, because we're supposed to have 68 car spaces, by the time you get pylons for a very big bill, you have ramps to upstore, upstairs parking, you need lift wells, stair wells, you need garbage areas. Um, there is also a shop or safety, as far as I understand, it's actually a security place, but a shop. All of that on 68 car spaces. We will not end up with 68 car spaces and we also end up with people that won't park there. I've already had elderly people talk to me and say, I will not park there, it's not safe. Certainly young women. <laughs> the hospitality industry are really concerned about their staff coming out from work at late at night that they won't use that car space either. So you've also got the balconies. Like it's a very narrow block to be trying to squeeze them on with no green space and overshadowing anything in the area. As I say, the, the Quest Hotel down at, I think Mr. Dobson um, opened it. It's a brilliant facility. They have questions about their security down there. It's four stories high and yet there's no overlooking any school, there's no overlooking any houses, it's in a business type area and it fits in and it's got even got space around it, but this won't have. It's a very confined space. Yeah. Any other questions? Any other questions? Thank you so much, Marion, for coming in. Thank you, Marion. Thanks, Marion. Marion, I'd like to take a picture of that and compliment your submission. Is that okay? I would love that to happen. <laughs> Very good. Make a start. Thank you. All right. My name is Jeff Newman. I'd like to thank Mayor O'Keefe, councillors and the CEO, the directors and the planning department for allowing me to speak to my submission this afternoon. And I'd like to read as written. I'm a retired primary school teacher and principal of 35 years and currently work with vulnerable citizens in our community and beyond in terms of mental health and disability support and advocacy. The issues that I raise today are in no way connected to the Australia-wide organisation that I work for, nor are they aligned to any other person or groups of people who speak over the allocated two days. I'm here today as a concerned ratepayer in relation to the proposed sale or gifting of land of the Maud Nixon Edward Streets car park to build a four-storey social housing development on this site. My objection to this proposal is based on the location and the design. And my concerns are threefold. Lack of well-provisioned green spaces from an educational perspective and high density construction close to the CDB. I, like most people, <coughs> excuse me, am an advocate for social housing, but it must be based on best practice. Research shows that social housing works best for vulnerable people when it is built with well-provisioned green spaces. Positioning this social housing project closer to the Shepherd and Lake precinct may be an option council may choose to consider. 
This incredibly well-resourced communal area would potentially promote improved mental health and physical well-being of our vulnerable citizen, citizens. These citizens would be able to uh, access the expansive green spaces, enabling them to utilise the following amenities. Walking and running tracks, barbecue areas, Raymond West swimming pool, aqua moves, all abilities playground, skate park, outdoor exercise equipment, cogs for the people events, SAM, canoeing, bike tracks, fishing, whether that be in a lake or a river, and much more. Suggesting to a vulnerable person with a mental health challenge or a disability that it's not far to travel from the proposed construction site to the lake precinct is extremely problematic. There would be nil cost to council in terms of creating new well-provisioned green spaces because the infrastructure is already there for all citizens to use and enjoy. Inevitably, it would, be allow, it would allow for our vulnerable citizens to experience an increased sense of community. After working for 35 years as a primary school teacher and principal in the state system, I'm at a total loss that a four-storey dwelling of any design is being considered at this location next to Ace College. All students have the right to feel safe in their educational setting as well as experience the delivery of a comprehensive curriculum both indoors and outdoors. Recreational space is already at a premium at Ace College and this will be further compromised if a four-storey dwelling of this design is constructed as per the proposal. From an, from an educational perspective, I don't believe that anyone could provide council with one positive educational outcome for students, staff or parents at Ace College if construction is to proceed. OHS compliancy is an issue for me in terms of a construction site and assembly emergency assembly points. Their only entrance would be from Maud Street, the front door. I also have concerns that the proposed four-storey development is to be constructed in a densely populated residential area close to the CBD. In my opinion, hardly conducive to improving the physical and emotional well-being of our, of our residents. If construction was to proceed, residents would not have easy access to any expansive well-provisioned green spaces, rather they would have ready access to concrete and bitumen. I am unable to endorse a four-storey social housing construction of any description in Shepparton. Dispersed dwellings potentially similar in construction to the Haven project in, the Maroop, in Maroopna may be considered as an alternative by council. I believe that best practice should be considered at all times to assist decision making. Research would indicate that the proposed design of the social housing project in Shepparton does not conform with what would be considered current best practice for our vulnerable residents. You have the opportunity here to make Shepparton a beacon for other municipalities to follow in terms of social housing. Please don't get it wrong. I trust that the concerns that I've raised and that of fellow submitters will generate robust discussion amongst the CEO, councillors and the planning department so that an informed decision can be made which best suits the social housing needs of our vulnerable citizens. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you so much, Jeff. Are there any points of clarification? No. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you very yeah, much. Just, um, oh, sorry, sorry. Councillor Dobson. Yeah, um, thanks for that. Um, uh, you talked about the location, the Victoria Park Lake area. Are you talking where about anybody anywhere in particular that you would have clarify where you think? Well, I don't know what parcels, parcels of land are actually available. available. Um, so, so that's a consideration I think that uh, council would have to look into in terms of, I can't endorse a four storey dwelling and there must be pockets or parcels of land where potentially one, two, three might be on there together. I don't know what the answer is. If I had the answer, I'd be giving it to you here today. But I simply, I don't know, Jeff. I just think that um, alternatives can be looked at and viewed by council and a 
a, um, an informed decision can be made. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Thanks for coming in, Jeff. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much for the opportunity to come along and address you. My name is Nathan Bell. I'm an agricultural consultant who specialises as an expert witness, writing and critiquing reports. I do that for the Australian judicial system. Today I'd like to critique and comment about the Cross Urban Report. Right? I cover that quite in detail in my submission. So if you look at a couple of things in relation to um, the report, it talks about economic benefits assessed and the title and the objective. This assessment quantifies the economic and social benefits associated with the proposed development. Now it's a justification study. It's not a feasibility study. It does not consider the detriments, the disadvantages, drawbacks, hindrances, impediments, liabilities, obstacles, constraints. The negative dollar costs aren't even accounted for. The report should have considered all aspects of the proposal, not just the positive accounts. Wouldn't you agree with that, Peter? Uh, it's your presentation uh, today, David, so uh, please continue. So I spoke to the author, Rajiv. Uh, by his own admissions, he failed to raise qualifications and attach a CV. So how in the hell do you know, we know, who the hell is he? No, he did not, and has not visited Shepparton. The view that the post side, talked to the school, talked to neighbours, talked to businesses or residents. He informed me that the scope or the objective of the report was provided to him by the CEO and or the planning department. At no stage was he requested to discuss any potential needs of the planned social housing. That was outside his scope, he told me. Not allowed to. He relied on an old map on page two that was provided to him by the council. Right? Does not include high secondary college. Is that a deliberate ploy? And he failed to follow the ethos of his own company's own business, apply best collective intelligence, undertake a comprehensive analysis, thorough research, truly understanding people. He put in a whole series of quotes, right? But we can't check that because there's no bibliography, no references at the end, nothing. We can't even validate whether anything he put in is correct. You can't. Right? Basically, it's crap. Can you just please be mindful and have some respect in the room? We're very happy to have you here, but I would like the language to please be a little bit more respectful. Thank you. Language. Thank you. Just continue. I'm, I'm throwing my voice. Thank you. That's I have fine. a disability. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Be mindful. Thank you. The report contains false and misleading information. The report states that the development is approximately 200 metres from Coles, Kmart, Aldi, Target, etc. When in fact, if you measure it on Google Earth by walking, it ranges from 470 to 830 metres. The report states the north side of Nixon Street is primarily residential. I walked the whole length of Nixon Street on the north side. From the Lemnos football ground, Shep Swans, right through the railway line. It's not. It's actually 50-50. And it's changing quickly as more and more businesses establish themselves and less and less residential properties. The report states there will be an average of 1.9 persons per apartment. Total of 57. Rubbish. There will be 30 apartments, 15 one bedroom can house two people, 15 two bedroom can house 40, for a maximum at any one time of 90 people. 90, not 57. He also does a financial analysis. He says that we have an average benefit of $25,000 per person. But he doesn't count for any of the downsides because he was never asked to. No, it's false to make a claim $25,000 per person per year. 
the report assumes all the residents will be adults. Well, I spoke to Winchingham, single parents, little kids are going to be in there. Right? Children won't provide an economic benefit, they're not going to be awarded working. It discusses the employment opportunities and the social housing tenants. Goals is going to visit the chairman, goes down a walk around the CBD. Was estimated by going to cost eleven point three million dollars. It's deceitful. It is wrong. The urban ethos report is false, misleading, and erroneous. No credence should be given to the report. I think this best sums up the report. It is so biased. Why didn't we get both sides of the story? Peter, did you write the objective? As I said, David, it's your presentation. Um, Thanks. Please note on record that um, CEO chooses not to answer my question. I'll answer your questions at an appropriate time. Okay. Um, that's all, and thank you for the opportunity. I look forward to ensuring that this uh, project fails. Okay, are there any points of clarification, councillors? No, ben? Where is your property in relation to the proposal? I have two properties in Shevon, so I live at the end of Archer Road, and uh, we have a property in Nixon Street. Okay. At least my wife's business operates from the property in Nixon Street. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, David. Thank you for coming. Thanks, David. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, my, my name is Rosalind Nags. I'm a former school principal, school principal. And, and since, since my retirement, I've sat on several local, local boards of management, management GB Health, Health being, being one of them. I appreciate, I appreciate the opportunity to be heard today, and I, and I presume my submissions, submissions are in front of you. Thank you. My husband and I have purchased a historic property in Lord Street, and it's taken 12 months to seek planning and heritage permits to now begin restoration of the house to its former glory. We, we hope our, our home, home will enhance the centre of Shepparton. I'm, I'm opposed to a four-storey building or a three-storey building being, being built across, across the road from us on the site of the Lord, Nixon and Edward Streets car park. And I, and I imagine you would be not appreciative of a building of that size opposite your home. In your, in your governance framework in 6.32 of decision making, it states that if a report to be considered at a council meeting concerns a subject matter which will directly affect the rights of a person or persons, the report must record whether the person or persons have been provided with an opportunity to communicate their views and have their views considered. Obviously, the subject matter in this case being the proposed building for social housing will impact on the ACE College, nearby retailers, hospitality venues, businesses and residents. However, However, in the CEO's, CEO's proposal to councillors on the 21st of December and in the Ethos Urban Report, there was no mention of and no regard for the rights of the aforementioned people. Had the decision-making governance been followed and the principles of natural justice applied, we would most likely not be going through this ardu arduous process today. Please have a look at 6.32 of your governance framework. In the CEO's proposal, the only risk listed to stop the proposal going ahead was to not agree to the sale or gifting of the land of the car parks. There was no mention of the risk to the community if the sale or gifting of the car park land were to go ahead. And it's these risks to the Greater Shepparton community which are of much greater concern to me rather than my own vested interest. I strongly believe that the ACE College will be affected by the proposed build. As an educator, I'm gravely concerned for the students who attend ACE College if the proposed building goes ahead. These students are vulnerable. They're already disengaged from the mainstream of education. ACE provides a safe, secure learning environment, and this will be destroyed with a three or four storey social housing project towering over them. Education is the only hope for the future of those students. Also of risk to the community if the building goes ahead is that the opportunity for further car parking development on that site cannot occur. Already it's difficult to get a park in the areas of Maud, Nixon and Orr Streets. 
What will it be like in 2030 when councils predicted that the population in Shep City will grow to 80,000 people? Another risk which has not been considered if the social housing high density build goes ahead is the impact this will have on the disadvantaged tenants. 30 high density units for disadvantaged people with no green space is a recipe for disaster. During my career, I've worked closely with many disadvantaged people. I have an understanding of their many reasons for being vulnerable, their needs, and I have an understanding of their behaviours. I was involved, as were local councillors, in the neighbourhood renewal project in the north of Shepparton in 2000. There was an area of high density housing which was referred to as the ghettos. It was a scary place to visit. When I needed to do a home visit, I'd take someone else with me. As part of the project, the high density buildings were demolished as they were deemed to be an unhealthy environment. Single units with green spaces were recommended. Yesterday, my colleague Janet Gilkirkman provided you with further information on this project. In June 2018, the Planning and Environment Act 1987 was amended to include the objective to, to facilitate the provision of affordable housing in Victoria and to define affordable housing as housing, including social housing, that is appropriate for the housing needs of very low, low and moderate income houses. The word appropriate is so important. I believe it is our duty as a society to look after the, those less fortunate than ourselves. But let's do it with respect and provide appropriate housing that will offer a better lifestyle for those in need. As councillors, you are custodians of our community for a short time. However, the decisions you make will last a long time. I thank the councillors who've taken the time to visit Ace College met with concerned residents and have investigated appropriate housing for disadvantaged people. And Councillor James, it's great to see you back on deck. I encourage each of you to apply good governance to this decision and consider what is best for all of the community. As Mayor O'Keefe has stated, an informed decision needs to be made on this proposal. I urge you to say no to the selling, gifting or leasing of the car park land in Maud, Nixon and Edward Street. Thank you. Thank you so much, Roslyn. Roslyn. Are there any points of clarification before we move on to Robin, just from Roslyn's presentation? Councils are all happy to continue? Yep, thank you, Roslyn. Robin, good afternoon. Thanks, Thanks Kim. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the councils for the opportunity to speak today against the proposal to sell or gift the land known as the Maud and Edward Street car park for the purpose of building a social housing development. I'd first like to state that I support affordable housing. I want to see Shepparton being the leader in providing the right type of housing situated in the right location so the best possible outcome is achieved, benefiting all the parties. I, like many other ratepayers and residents, first knew of this affordable housing project when it made the front page of the Shepparton News the day before the Christmas Council meeting where councillors voted on the proposal. I'm first to admit my initial reaction reading the article was, this is not going to be good, as it's going to be in my backyard. 12 months ago, we'd purchased Lorraine, a 100-year-old house diagonally opposite the proposed site, and intend to restore it and make it our family home. Now, over two months down the track, it's become much more than that. First of all, I've realised how flawed and biased the report was that councillors replied upon when making the decision at the Christmas meeting. The representative from Ethos Urban who wrote the report had not visited the site and had acted upon instructions he received directly from council staff. He was asked to put forward the positive parts of the proposal and only, and he failed to note the ACE College, a school with 100 disadvantaged students that was right next door. He failed to address the effects this development would have on Ace College and its students' future. I knew very little about this school, but now having spent time familiarising myself with its activities, I now know how important this school is in developing students who would not survive in the mainstream education system. 
If this project was to go ahead, there is no way that ACE College could provide a safe environment for the teachers and students. The stringent education department and Victoria's building regulations would make it impossible to continue operating. The school would be forced to close or, re or relocate once again. This development would force the school to make its neon sign and solar system redundant. The fire and emergency exits would become non-compliant and no design change can rectify these major issues and ensure the safety of the students and staff. If I was allowed more time, I could elaborate on what other effects this proposal would have on the school in its future. I know that three councillors have visited ACE College and taken the time to look and understand all the issues associated with this proposal. And today I ask the remaining councillors to do so before voting on this matter. This development is ill-conceived and will have adverse effects on the school, the residents and business community of Shepparton for many, many years to come. The building of this multi-storey building over at least an 18-month period will have a huge effect on this area of the CBD. The noise, dust and traffic interruptions on business, the school and residents will be catastrophic. Some business houses have already stated to me that if it does proceed, they will be relocating when their leases run out and some retail and hospitality owners have said they're just going to close up. The shape and location of this parcel of land made it an expensive option to build a multi-storey complex. And if the developers were to pay the market price for the land, which in real value exceeds to about $2 million, then it would become even less financially attractive. Based on the concept plans that have been submitted, I think it is impossible for the design team to comply with the new amendments to the Victorian planning provisions introduced on the 20th of December 2021. The accompanying landscape provisions are quite onerous and they require more trees and green space than was previously needed before. Car parking in this part of the CBD is already in short supply, so this proposal would compound the problem of providing safe car parks in this area. The current 67 spaces will be, be dramatically reduced because of the need for supporting pillars, car access ramps, stairs, lifts, space for fire, plumbing, rubbish and electrical services. We need to keep all of our existing car parking free in all areas of the Shepparton CBD to allow for future growth and to support the mall redevelopment and the growth of business and retail in this location. Two months ago I knew very little about the demand for social housing and what was best practice. Now I do know there is a huge demand and there's an issue that we have to address as a community. It seems from my research and talks with people who have knowledge in this field that the smaller developments with green space and good locations are the best affordable housing options. As elected custodians of Greater Shepparton, I trust that all councillors will take into account the community's feelings in this matter, as I believe there was in the vicinity of 750 submissions with a very small support, uh, percentage supporting the proposal. As councillors, you have an opportunity to be part of a process to provide a better solution to our affordable housing shortage and set the benchmark for other municipalities. This location style of development is not the right solution and can never be designed to comply or provide the best outcome. Carry out your own due diligence. Don't take an easy option. You were voted in to make the right decisions for the majority of the Greater Shepparton community. So vote no to this ill-fated proposal. I thank you once again for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Are there any points of clarification, councillors, that you would like to ask Robin? Right, thank you so much. Thanks, Robin. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Rob. So firstly, opening up, I strongly... Do I get the click or what? Oh, yeah. They strongly oppose anything to do with the sale, lease or gifting of the property. Um, I congratulate the council on their involvement in relocating ACE College to its current location. In this process, um, I've been involved and visited the, the school on a number of occasions, <clears throat> and it's a wonderful school, but the, the decision to do anything and place a building beside the school will effectively 
render it uh, in, incorrect or non-confined in the eyes of V. And I just don't see how you could possibly vote to do, to do that. It's got solar on the roof. It'll be in constant shade. I attended the school this morning. The recreational area already is, uh, has about a third shade cover on the property. So putting a four-storey building there, I just don't see how you could possibly do that. Um, another reason for the opposition to this facility is just what it's going to do to our CBD and the Maud Street area um, of canvassed businesses, residents in the process to building my objections to this case and they will leave. We're going to have, unfortunately we lost High Street slowly over the years. It's starting to claw back. Maud Street is coming back through some good efforts of the council to support business but I can't see how we can do this. I can't see how we can build a two-storey car park that the elderly won't use, the tradies won't use. Um, and we need it for the vibrancy of that location. And uh, there's no green space for, for, the, for the residents, so where are they going to go? And you've talked about that the green space is available at Queen's Park Gardens. Well, is that going to work? And is or the Mel a more accessible place for them to congregate? And I just fear for those traders and the people in the surrounds. Um, I just object to its design. And what I've given you there, and I don't know what you guys have seen, but that is an architect's engineering drawing of a four-storey building to spec, housed up against the local the buildings that surround it. Now, um, Unfortunately, and I've lived in Melbourne and Richmond, uh, public housing and car parks do become ghettos. And um, I don't like using the word, and I just don't want to see it built in Shepparton. And I can't see it going any other way based on what's happened previously. Um, I've spoken with the police. I've spoken with Berry Street. They don't want it. And unfortunately, as institutions, they can't speak to you. Maybe you critique them behind the scenes, but publicly, uh, in talking to them, they're all against it. Um, and just as a, as a building and a housing, these poor, unfortunate people and different types of, of people, like we've got homeless, uh, in, a, in amongst uh, single mothers, I just don't get how that type of cohort can work together uh, without... You know, there's, I can't see harmony in a place like that. When we're boxed up, their view is going to be solar panels on the roof of ACE and everybody else's rooftops. You know, where is the mental well-being uh, and the physical well-being for those tenants? And what about the alternatives? Surely there's better places that are available on public land or government land and even your own properties that you, you govern here. And, you know, we've got empty school spaces now because of the super school. Um, we've got lots of room down beside the railway station that talk, you know, provides access to services. Surely they're a better option than crowding these poor unfortunate people into a space of a four-storey design like we're looking at here. Um, and Tarabock Park, by way of example, if we relocated Ace from there, there's, there's green space there, and I'm sure if you haven't already seen it, there's a design afoot where 30 apartments can have their own green space and common area and access to all services. Um, that's about it. Police councillors, you know, do your due diligence. Make sure you're looking at all the alternatives that are available in Shepparton because this is not the only one. And do you have to gift this particular car space? No, you don't. So, so please, come prepared, come prepared with, with your, your own information, information and, and, your, and your, own your own canvassing of, your, of your, own your own constituents. Thanks, Reg. Is there any points of clarification, councillors? Can, can I ask a question? question? We can answer it, we'll try. Yeah. Yeah. To, to the CEO, are you, are you considering a three-storey car park as a submission? 
sorry, sorry not three story car park. A three story building as an alternative to this four story. Uh, Reg, there's a, uh, you'd appreciate the design as a iterative process. It uh, moves from here to here and um, we're considering all options. Uh, obviously, uh, there's a lot of people making submissions and you'd expect us to, uh, in partnership with the uh, developers, to um, make some changes to the design. So, if uh, three stories part of it, uh, yeah, we'll consider uh, three story components. And when do you consult, consult that, that part, part of it to the community? community. There, there is, is. You might get such a bad reaction, reaction if it, we knew it was a three story building. Yeah, look, that's a fair, fair comment. Um, I mean, every change we make, we can't go back and forth. That's just uh, not an appropriate process. But um, once we consolidate uh, all the submissions, uh, there'll be a report written. Um, there'll be um, no doubt consideration to design changes. And that'll be reported back to council um, as soon as possible uh, with consideration in relation to design. Yeah. And, and I just, I just don't get the secrecy of the whole thing. I really, I really can't, can't see why, 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 why couldn't you know, we have a question here and why couldn't we have other members of, of the public in here? Yeah, look, uh, this is your opportunity to make your uh, presentation, Rich. Uh, this process is uh, transparent and as open oh. as uh, any process and everybody's getting their PSA and council's listening to everything that's got to be said. OK, Jeff, did you have a question? Reg, um, thanks for your presentation. Um, interested to, uh, if you could explain this diagram. Yeah, yeah so, so, so uh, the, 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 the arc is an input, input from, from um, from uh, the Bureau of Meteorology. Uh, so that's taken on, I think, the 21st or 12th of June at 10 o'clock in the morning. And that shows you the shadowing uh, over the whole facility, not only ACE, but also the surrounding buildings. So what's the shadowing part? Is that the, 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 the grey area in here? Is that what you're saying? Well, you, you can see a dark grey area there. On a lot of most, most of the rooftops of the of the neighbouring buildings. Oh, that blue part there. Yeah. Oh, I see. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments or? Questions? All right. Thank you so much for coming in today. Sure. Thank you. Right. Thanks very much. We've. That's one alternative we've I've come up or Frank and I have come up with at the back of the fire station, where we could still re retain the retardation basin and build over the top of that. You have plenty of greenery, a bit of garage, communal areas, everything. There's another one, which was Mason Street, the old depot. There's not, you can fit more on that, but there's a lot less gardening area. You could fit more on the other, if you um, sacrifice the, the greenery and stuff like that. But the other one is close to supermarket, pharmacy, doctors, there's five outlets, food outlets there, and minimal disruption to shops and everything like that. So, in actual fact, uh, I've found it strange. I've been in that area for since 1980, and I found it strange that you actually build a retardation there. We do need it, but it could have been condensed. Still provided probably 40 meg of retardation, and 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 the land could have been utilised for exactly what we put up here. So I, I don't think there was a lot of consideration for what you could actually do with that land. You you really wasted it, in my opinion. Um, both proposals. Both very feasible. I've done figures on them. Uh, you could probably on uh, on on Vaughan Street. Trevor, you might want to explain how you want to build over the top of what's actually there and maintain the retardation. There yeah. are a couple of options on it, though. Yeah, you'd have to have the columns in it, and then a, um, there's a fair bit of in, in the floor. It's about four million dollars to do the floor to build on the top. But total cost was that was ten point ten point five. So you could build 32 units there. Uh, another option, rather than doing a floor over the top, you could actually maintain the retardation in the centre of it. Like I said, 40 meg, which would be more than enough of that area. And then uh, basically a retainer 
units around the perimeter and you could actually just grow a cluster of, of greenery, trees and things like that, which would be quite attractive. Um, the retardation there is only, it's only, it's not, uh, it doesn't have water uh, like flowing in and flowing out like two separate pipes. It's actually just, it backs up and then it'll disperse. So it won't hold water there either, just to give you an idea how that works. Um, but it does tick a lot of boxes. I felt like, like I said, I felt like it was a wasted opportunity with the land. The Mason Street one, good piece of land adjoining the, uh, the parkland. I've heard uh, that uh, there may be contamin contamination issues with that site. Uh, does, any does anyone actually know what level of contamination, even here? Uh -huh. so, so, no, no one actually knows, knows to give you an idea. I've cleaned up plenty of service station sites for two fifty, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000. So it's not a horrendous cost. And unless you actually know what the contamination levels are, just next door to where I am, the old Midland milk site, deemed to be toxic. It was sold for a song. I didn't buy it because of the reason, I thought, it, you know, the contamination, too much of a risk. And the contamination levels are... There's no remedial works that need to be done. So that's a great site too. Um, so basically, with these two options, the whole idea of this is just to, you know, have you actually thought about other areas and other proposals? This whole proposal of, of this thing has created, like, so much angst. We've had three Edward Streets since 79. Uh, I've had discussions with you, Peter. I reckon I had a big blue with you over, over the doors there about 22 years ago, putting roller shutters at the front because the place got rammed, that ram braided in the end. But, you know, this has created so much angst, I don't even know how you even come up with this idea. I know, I know if, as, as a developer, developer myself. myself, and I'm doing 30 units at the moment on the corner of Vaughan and St George's Road. Planning department have been great too. The boys helped me out a lot uh, to get that over the line. So I have got experience in that field and I have sold units before to, to, to various organisations. But uh, I just don't know how you come up with this idea, and, and uh, it's just created, like I said, so much, so much drama and angst. When you've got other other sites, uh, the school sites, what are they doing with those? I think council have got land in Archer Street that could be a possibility as well. There's a lot of other areas that need to be explored. And, uh, this, you can't just go pulling the trigger on this thing. Uh, as, from a landlord's perspective, like owning three Edward Street, data pass have been there in excess of probably 20, 25 years. They've already told me they would go, so um, they probably pay about 50k a year. I'm not sure who's going to pay 50k a year to be there after it's done. Um, if I was uh, being a developer, if I came to you with a proposal, I don't think I'd get past the junior planner with this proposal, let alone what I'm already doing at the moment. So uh, I think there's a lot of other options that you could look at. And is this all the levels, levels that it's going to go? Four level, four level, four level, level highway. highway. The building. Well, the design is, it's in a, a process at the moment of, uh, well, we're obviously hearing submissions, hearing uh, your ideas, and yep. uh, be back and forth. Uh, you've got to remember this is a proposal from um, uh, Beyond Housing and Wintringham. Um, they keep on saying, people keep on saying it's a council proposal. Uh, it's Beyond Housing and Wintringham's proposal in partnership with the Victorian Big Bill. Um, the council's been involved, obviously, because we've got an affordable housing strategy and uh, we've got desperate need uh, for affordable housing. So um, it's, it's a partnership approach. So the design, um, there needed to be some sort of concept put out there just to get the conversation going. Yeah. But the actual uh, end design uh, will most likely be something that's uh, uh, different to what's uh, up there at the moment and that'll be influenced by um, many of the comments that are coming via the submissions at the moment so I can't give you a definitive answer as to what the final uh, design will look like but that's uh, that's not unusual for a um, big project like this. <coughs> Tom, Tom Cockles and I are the two blocks beside it at Nixon Street. Street. And then we, we went, went just, just rough, rough plans, plans and approach the council, the, the town planning, planning to see what, what we could do there. there. And, and they, they said we could go three levels, levels but the third level, level had, to had to be built, built back. back. So, so now, now it's, it's going to be four, four which is just going to dominate, dominate that school. And, and that, that piece of land, the two blocks we own there, are going to be useless anyway, you know. 
Yeah, so the setback it's requirements a bit of a on how high you go. Four when we were in the LA of three, you know. Well, depending on how high you go, the, the setback uh, alters. So um, I'm sure you would have been permitted to do everything when, within the uh, the rules. And we're we're going to go right under the green car park on, on that. We're going to let it come off the car park. We're very interested in that. We're going to come off the car park. We've got to have all that car space in that area. We're going to have this place. You won't get all those car parks. You take up the first level. Again, so you've got to have all there. Yeah. yeah. The other thing, too, is by your development, you only take up, you don't need to watch two, maybe three parks. If you could gain access to the Council Car Park by doing it, whereas proposals put forward to the Council Car Park are clean, as you said, Pete. You know, I'm just going on my own building experience, but by the time you put this, in enclosures, columns, columns access, access point, point ramp, ramp, in and out ramp. ramp. Uh, oh, you you lose half the park. And that would be extremely detrimental to CBD. The process has been six to seven minutes, fix up the hall. We've been trying out for 20 years. Yeah, frankly, the car parking needs to be considered and uh, certainly will be. The new building is going to be a big disruption. It's going to be this is what the Mel's TV, where Dan and the other sites, it's going to be no disruption to the um, CBD. And they're in a better, better position, close to the supermarket and everything. That area has been, been a, because we've been going for so long, it was a, it was a B class area for a long time, maybe it was a C class area for a period of time, most of the shops in Wardsford were vacant. And now it's actually become quite vibrant. Quite a, quite a good little area. area. I don't have to see it destroyed. Frank, it's probably, in relation probably to gone the best it's ever gone, gone, I reckon, in the last 20 years. years. Okay. In relation to your Caraval Park uh, plan, um, the Retard Ocean Basin uh, has been designed there for quite some time, and the catchment is fairly large. It, it goes to the northeast um, on the other side of the highway, uh, picks up the showgrounds, and uh, comes through. Um, and for quite some time we said to the CFA that our preference was uh, that that was all allocated for retardation but uh, we come to a compromise there because of the benefit obviously of relocating the CFA and providing a uh, 10 million dollar development for uh, Shepparton and the, the modernisation of the CFA. So um, there's, there's very little ground if anything uh, outside of the um, the appropriate um, area needed for retardation facing at Caravan Park. Mm -hmm. my, my own experience, experience with, uh, with, with looking at it just recently, recently we, we had, had a rent storm about, about a month ago. ago. Basically, Basically to give you an idea, idea that the Vaughan Street will fill up with water. water. It's, it's quite a large V through, through the through there, there on the, uh, on the on north, north side, side of the road. road. It's been, been there since we had milk redeveloped. And that, and that basically laps, laps our front door when it does, uh, does, does back up with the torrential rain. rain. And it did, it did the, same the same thing just recently. recently. But the heavy, the heavy rain, rain that you had, had, had just a month ago filled, filled up with retardation about a third. third. So, so you're not, not going to lose the retardation basis. You don't need it. Correct. And it's going to be a lot of It might be a nice sort of now. And it's probably safe because the fence is put up there. And you can keep more walking there. And while it's holding water, it could be yeah, 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 an, an issue as well. Well, well. But it's only going to be a problem. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, there's, there's a, a who we worked with in conjunction in, uh, in Melbourne in regards, regards to the floor design. They're actually, they're actually doing, doing, doing one currently. We do one similar at Caulfield. We've done the pre-class house there. And it was just about the retardation space. So it's not a problem with the building. It's probably, probably due to what the one, one in um, Mason Street, what's it about 6.6 million, yeah. 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 compared yeah. to 10.6 there, the main difference, difference is the flooring. flooring. Do it. Do it. That's going to look a lot better, better in that area than what that ice is now. Yeah. And if, if, you know, if, if, if everything aligned, it could, it could be looked at. And, and, uh, it's, it's a great site, it's really underutilised. If, if you've ever been to that, that site, site um, 
and you've got the parkland park beside, beside it, which is underdeveloped, underdeveloped and, and it would be perfect, perfect so for so yeah, just, just, just a huge park, park is totally underutilised. Yep, uh, it's just rough, really. Brickworks Park, we know it well. Yeah, yeah. and that, that, that could be, uh, you know, that could, that could be something, something you could work towards and, 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 and uh, you know, barbecues, areas, areas, things, things like that, walking track track through it, get a little bit green room on what it is at the moment. It's, it's, it's plenty of shrubbery through there. It's, it's, it's a great little park. park. It could be fantastic. The whole, the whole point is, uh, is uh, we've done a fair bit of work on these. You know, you know, that level if we just play around on the computer for half an hour. These are real propositions. Yeah, they need to be investigated. But, and the, and figures the figures are worked out, out real figures. figures. And I, don't I, don't know, know, I can say, like I said, I'm going to buy my for 30 units. Another, Another point, point too was that they didn't want to buy 30, 30 units off me because of my development, development because they said they didn't want 30 in a hit. So, so I don't know how we can go, go 30 in this location. This is like a four high. No, 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 so, so you know, I've, I've had to provide a bit of, bit of space, space. Planners, planners have worked with me on that, and like I said, they've been, been great in, in assisting us to get it over the line. There's a lot of things that this, this proposal doesn't tick, I feel, and obviously a lot of other people feel, feel, feel the same way. And it's nothing in social housing, I don't have a problem with that. You've got to look at locations a little harder. All right, anything else to add? Any questions or point of clarification from the councillors? No? All right, thank you very much for coming in. Okay, okay. Trevor. Thanks, Frank. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Thank you all for the opportunity to present this afternoon. I mean, uh, a number of you have met me before. I'm Michael D. Shepherd, and I'm the Deputy um, CEO at Winteringham. I mean, obviously, I mean, obviously we'll be aware Winteringham, Winteringham support, support this proposal, proposal um, and, we and we think it is a great opportunity to create a partnership um, and an exemplar for how local, state and the community can work together um, in delivering really good outcomes. My contribution this afternoon is going to touch on three themes, uh, the policy framework, the suitability of location and I think also to address a number of, um, well, probably what I can only describe as rather unsavoury comments that have been made about this proposal by opponents who are clearly very vocal and very well coordinated. Um, so, but I think before I start, what I just want to remind everyone and remind myself is that this conversation is not about the built form, it's actually about making this space available for social housing. Um, the conversations about design, built form, uh, alignment with zoning, you know, land use setbacks, overlooking, all of those things will be considered and have to be addressed um, as part of when a set of town planning drawings are submitted for this project. And at that point, if the project can't meet those planning requirements, it will fail. Um, so I think, you know, as I mentioned earlier, there's been a huge amount of interest in, um, in, in the project and frankly some rather ugly comments um, by people who are not in favour and I think, can I just state for the record, um, the men, women and children who will be housed at this site are members of the local community. They're members of the local community who are homeless or at risk of becoming homeless simply by being priced out of the local private rental market. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it really needs to be re-emphasised. They're living here in, in, in Shepparton and they've got a connection to Shepparton. They could be your neighbours, they could be people you pass in the street, they could be people you say hello when you're shopping at Coles. And I think from Winteringham's perspective, um, to hear how these people are being described by sections of the local community um, is really, really disappointing. With respect to the policy framework, um, the proposal actually responds to Council's affordable housing strategy that was endorsed by the councillors in 2020 and also the, uh, the CBD revitalisation project. And it's worth noting that the affordable housing strategy um, confirms that uh, adequate housing is a basic human right and it impacts the livability of Shepparton's residents around health, wellbeing, productivity and just general community participation. That strategy document has three key facts which I really found surprising. 800 people live in Shepparton who are homeless or marginally housed. Shepparton has the highest per capita level of homelessness in regional Victoria and there are 1,700 housing shortfall, 1,700 houses. It's a shortfall of 1,700 houses 
uh, for people in low levels of income in the Shepparton area. And this is before COVID. With the impact of the last two years of COVID um, and, and a regional, uh, uh, re regional accommodation costs, the risks around homelessness in Shepparton have only got worse. And the Victorian government's recognised this through their commitment to invest 45 million in this region through the big housing build. So I think you know the evidence is there and the policy framework is there to support this proposal. Um, and I think it, it also creates a really um, creative solution to maintain public infrastructure while also utilising the airspace, airspace above for, for social goods. So um, through the decision that council made in December. Um, to in endorse the concept of using this space for, for air rights, um, I think that should continue. With respect to the location, um, you know, again, the identification of this site has been um, suitable, I think shows great foresight. That moored Nixon corner, it is suited to provide excellent uh, amenity for future residents who will live in those housing units and allow them to thrive in the community with access, immediate access to the services and supports they require. It's within walking distance of shopping, uh, medical, pharmacy, allied health, education and other services. Um, and equally, it's, we have to remember there is an acute shortage of available, let alone suitable available land for which to um, provide housing in, in Shepparton. I, I received a phone call in January from a person who opposed the project and they said, oh, well, just build across the bridge in Marupna or go out to Shepparton East. Well, I think um, for the residents who will call these units home, those locations are totally inappropriate um, and will only lead to further isolation and disadvantage. I'm running out of time, so I will just speak briefly about our clients. Um, now, our clients will benefit greatly from purpose-designed and integrated housing um, our clients are disadvantaged, isolated and often forgotten. Um, they do not have a voice and if they're not supported will continue to be marginalised and at worst made homeless. Um, they have a right to housing. I touched on that earlier. It is a basic human right. And I think um, they don't have the means or the will to respond to the vocal, distasteful and at times you know, quite ill-informed public campaign to oppose this proposal. Um, our clients have experienced homelessness and that's often just through life experience. It's, it's, it's often just bad luck which creates that and again for them to be able to receive purpose-built social housing close to amenities and the support they need would be very beneficial. Um, I just want to introduce this gentleman here. Brown, Brown mate, you've seen, you've seen him on the, on the front page of the Shepparton News last week. Eric is a Winteringham client living in our Maud Street units. Um, he's got stage four cancer but he's going on a two and a half thousand kilometre trek with his scooter to raise money for charity. So that is a contribution that clients can make to community if they're given the opportunity with safe and secure housing. Thank you. Okay, is there any points of clarification from the councillors that you would like to ask? Well, well, can I just ask, have you done a project with Beyond Housing before, the two of you together collectively? No, no, we, no we haven't. Okay, no. so that's a new model. Has there been any way of maybe, you know, trialling to understand what that might, you know, well, this was asked for me today. Yeah, look, the partnership is really to make it practical for us to develop a building location, we're going to do that again, but ultimately, the partnership is really two smaller projects, smaller parts, 16 units, but beyond, you know, 15 or six units, and it is a very good idea to have a partnership to do that again, and it's a very good idea to have a partnership to do that again, and it's a very good idea to have a partnership to do that again, and it's a very good idea to have a partnership to do that again, and it's a very good idea to have a partnership to do that again, and it's a very good idea to have a partnership to do that again, and it's a very good idea to have a partnership to do that again, and it's a very good idea to have a partnership to do that again, and it's a very good idea to have a partnership to do that again, and it's a very good idea to have a partnership to do that again, and it's a very good idea to have a partnership to do that again, and it's a very good idea to have a Jeff? Thanks, Michael, for your presentation. Just some clarification again. I think last time we met, you talked about some of the infrastructure within the building itself, such as interview rooms, management, and that sort of stuff. Can you just run through all that again as to the 
um, the uh, assistance that you'll be giving uh, the clients within the uh, within the complex? Yeah, I mean the units themselves are designed to allow people, if they have extended periods of illness, to be living in those units, um, and if there's limited mobility, to be living in those units. However, the, the building itself doesn't have office space or other auxiliary spaces to um, for staff to be working in. I mean, we have an office here in Shepparton and so do beyond. So we're very, very close to the building and um, we'll, we'll support through support the residents through that. But the office, the, the building, there's that community space on top for the residents, so the outdoor open space for, for both sites. But beyond that, um, there's no office space for the staff. And thanks for that. And can you clarify what size the units would be uh, based on your past experiences? Yeah, the units, uh, our units, so one bedroom units, because again, that's what we find is required for our, our residents, uh, typically 55 square metres internal space and then outdoor private space, um, which in this case would be balconies, so private balcony space, which typically would be another 10, 10 or 12 square metres, if not a little bit more. And, and that is the model that we build right throughout Victoria. So, um, and we find that gives the accessible space we require. So the bathrooms, the bedrooms are bigger than typical one bedroom units, just because if you're in a, a wheelchair or uh, have a mobility aid, that's what's required. And, and the bathrooms are created like what we call wet area spaces, no steps, um, you know, ramping. So people can access our units and, and throughout the whole site just with, with wheelchairs. And a final question, if I may, Mayor. and in terms of access um, between uh, apartments, um, uh, what sort of restrictions or what sort of security between, say if I was in one, um, uh, between floors, is there, a, is there a restriction floor to floor or area to area? Typically, no, I mean, the, the, uh, the, the lift system will be set up that it's only accessible by residents, so using you know, a FOB system or, or, or the like. But um, unless we then deliberately uh, restrict access to individual floor for residents, um, they're free to come and go, they're free to invite friends and, and, and family and whatnot. Um, so th there's restriction between the Winteringham clients and the Beyond Housing clients because it's been designed that there's no interface between the two, but it's, it's no different to any other multi-level block of flats mm. um, that, that's constructed. Thanks, Mark. Just one thing, finally, what was the purpose of two together rather than doing individual builds? Well, the, the, the site ideally lends itself to um, what we've designed, um, and it also responds to that council brief about, you know, uh, two levels of housing above car parking and broadly 30 units. So if we um, had a smaller site, you know, you're probably really wasting some of that capacity, but also the cost of construction um, to have fewer units um, and the, the infrastructure that's required to build above the car park, um, it would probably actually cost, cost pretty a bit as well. Okay, thank you. Any other points of... Memory, but, you know, it's, it's the state government who will fund the, the construction of, of the any other points of clarification, Ben? Just wondering if you've done your own consultation process, whether you're required to or whether you um, decided to, because there was a comment earlier that Barry Street weren't on board and that they were quite concerned about it. So from a social justice perspective, with everyone crammed in together, um, what's your feedback from actual people who know what they're talking about, not just the squeaky wheel of the public? Yeah, well, there's two aspects of the consultation. One is, in fact, the consultation we will need to go through as part of the town planning process. So uh, we'll be obliged to have public consultation around the design. Um, and so there, through that, you know, um, organisations like ACE, etc., cetera, uh, we will work with them. And we already, in fact, you know, through their communication with us, we understand what a lot of their concerns are and that is reflected into the preliminary work we've done. Um, consultation around operationalising of it um, council in terms of uh, future use. For us, you know, 15 unit size, um, we don't see that as concentration. Um, you know, the Morden Street site we have is, is 36 units. Uh, the one we're building on Wyndham Street has, has 28 housing units and so um, we're quite comfortable in terms of the support we provide into those units that the residents will be adequately supported. And I think that's the benefit of us being an aged care organisation as well. You know, we'll have, uh, we expect 30% of the residents will have an aged care package and 
that can deliver up to $60,000 a year worth of support. So they're really valuable tools. Uh, in addition to the homeless funding we receive that allows support, that will, uh, I think we think, um, successfully allow us to um, support the residents in the, in the way that each individual resident needs, and, and we're all quite different. And I think um, that's why you know, I'm quite proud in saying that uh, we've not had an eviction since 2013 from our housing. You see, that worries me. Because you hear a lot, like I'm a nurse, so I hear about pr problems in these sort of setups. I don't know if it's winter, County, but you do hear about what goes on. And if you're saying you haven't evicted anyone since 2013, is that just because there's too much red tape to evict anyone? Or have no, you just not had any complaints? Ethos around um, what supports can we provide to allow the residents and the tenants to maintain successful tenancies. I mean, as an organisation who work in the homeless space, the last thing we want to do is to evict somebody into homelessness, but we will if that is the, the ultimate requirement um, in terms of managing that site, but we are, uh, I think we're very successful in, in how we um, manage the support requirements to allow the residents to, um, to, to live there successfully. And so, so no complaints of domestic violence, no complaints of violence at all, or abuse or threats or, or substance abuse. I mean, these are all are. that do cause problems with neighbours. Yeah, yeah, no, and, and those things happen in our units, and that's no different to any property in Shepparton. Um, but, you know, when we have, because we have staff and ten based tenancy and support staff who are based in Shepparton, you know, um, we can react very quickly and manage the circumstance to support the resident as required um, to understand you know, why the complaints have been made and what needs to be done to resolve that issue. Okay. Okay. Uh, the general public, there's a lot of evictions. Um, in your your units, not none, like in the general public, people get evicted generally. There are always a certain percentage of people who, who aren't going to be allowed to stay in that house. Yeah. You're saying nobody in your units has been evicted since 2013 and it's not because they've caused any issues, it's just because you've dealt, you've worked through the issues. They've caused issues but we've, we've worked through them. And, and resolved. And, and, that, and that can actually also at times, um, with the agreement of the resident actually find it could be relocating to another unit within a site because you're not uh, getting along with your neighbour um, or even looking for alternative accommodation within um, the portfolio that we have, you know. Um, okay, that makes sense. So relocating, yeah. but yeah, yeah. not necessarily evict back on the street, uh, which is great, but you can still move people around. If, yeah. yeah, okay. And, and that's a, a tool that we have used um, in the past. And, and if that, we can use that tool to avoid homelessness, we will do that. All right, I think we're done. Okay, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, councillors. I'd like to firstly thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight regarding the proposed sale of the Nixon, Maud and Edville Street car park. I understand you've had a long two days, so your time is appreciated. My name is Georgie Schofield and I stand before you to respectfully implore you to vote no to the sale or gifting of the Nixon, Maud and Edward Street car park and or airspace in part or in full. I wholeheartedly support Greater Shepparton's need for social housing and congratulate you on driving this demand. However, I feel that the proposed location is not a suitable one. Shepparton A Secondary College is right next door and building a three to four storey building next to it will cause a negative impact on the learning of students there. We desperately need Shepparton Ace Secondary College to remain a viable educational option. As with the amalgamation of the four state uh, schools, our community is now limited on where we can send students who struggle in a government school. Indy, MCP, Berry Street and the Flexible Learning Centre are all at capacity with extensive waiting lists. Even Ace has a waiting list. If Shepparton A's College, which is an independent school, not an alternative school, were to close, it would be a loss to the community, which would be detrimental. 
As a teacher at Greater Shepparton Secondary College, I witness firsthand the desperation that myself and other staff feel when our students need to sit outside for a portion of the lesson to compose themselves or learn independently. If we did not have this opportunity, then it is our students that suffer and only become further agitated, which impacts on their learning. Learning has changed since we all went to school. The expectation is that schools provide open learning classrooms or the ability to take your class outside where students can enjoy the fresh air and sun. Many of our learners are stuck to their devices when they get home, so the fact that we can provide outdoor learning is enabling us to give them the sunlight and fresh air they desperately need. You may question why it is our responsibility to do this. Don't worry, we question that too. But if it helps our students learn, we will try anything. Coronavirus has also shown us that we need to further increase our use of outdoor space with the state government promoting it to help with the airflow and encourage social distancing with students. Learning and or playing outdoors enables students to collaborate as a group which builds on their peer relations. Learning in the classroom, whilst is also beneficial, does encourage students to separate into little clicky groups or to sit in the same space and not mingle. As an educator, we want our learners to feel valued and enjoy attending school where they know they are safe and cared for. As an educator, we are trying to create worldly citizens and lifelong learners. We want our children to be productive members of the community. If we take away or impede on their educational institute, we are only disadvantaging them for the future and teaching them from a young age that their voices and choices do not matter. Building a three to four storey development next to Ace College will take away any opportunity to not only learn outside, but play. It is fair for both, is it fair for both the residents of the four storey complex and the children to be next door to one another? Both feeling hemmed in, potentially hearing the conversations and looking at nothing but one another's walls or private business. Greater Shepparton is my home. I have been here most of my life. I am proud to live in Shepparton as it has everything I need. I understand and am supportive that towns need to be progressive, grow and develop as the world changes. I ask that you truly consider whether the, the proposed development is truly at the most beneficial location. We have all heard the negative opinions of those that either don't live in our town or they do and are only naysayers. Well, that's Shep for you or what do you expect from Shep Ferrells? These are hurtful words and not productive to creating a positive living experience in Greater Shepparton. I want Greater Shepparton to think progressively and lead the way in developing social housing that will stand the test of time and last decades while also looking out and supporting our children with their education. I want the residents of this accommodation to feel comfortable and supported with their needs is the proposed development really the best model? Are the residents surrounded by people, who, by people who could be role models and supportive influences? I want Greater Shepparton to model best practice and show other towns how social housing can be built successfully to support those residents. Let us think of all our community members, both young and old, and provide lasting support that we as a town can be proud of and become a town that others wish to emulate. I urge you to vote no to the sale or gifting of the Nixon, Maud and Edward Street car park and or airspace in part or full. Let's work together to find an alternative site that will not hamper the educational opportunities of our next generation and provide for those in need. Thank you. Thank you so much, Georgie. Thank you so much. It was really easy to listen to and nice and calm, just what we needed this time of the day. So. <laughs> Thank you so much. I know it's been a long two days No, it was really good. Thank you so much. It was really, really wonderful. Does any councillors need any clarification or any comments in regard to Georgie? No. Georgie, thank you again. Really appreciate your time Fabulous. coming in. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, Georgie. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so...
hi everyone, uh, my name's Meg Petherbridge. Um, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to come and talk about my submission today. I think most of you know me, actually I think all of you know me, so I won't worry about that. Um, so I'm not a resident or a business owner, but I do spend a lot of time in the CBD uh, and I am concerned about the impact of selling this car park. So, Matt, do you want to, oh, I do that. I haven't used one of these, okay. So I strongly object, as we all know, you've all got my submission. Uh, so, I also think we can do better for our social housing tenants uh, with more planning and consideration of well-being and safety in the design of this project because I think we have a responsibility as a community to get this right for them. Uh, so, the first point for me was around parking. So, the existing use of this site is entirely parking. It's safe, it's outdoors, it's got space for larger vehicles. And it's got, also got four safe off-street accessible bays for people with disabilities, which is a bit hard to find. Um, I really think it's a concerning precedent here for uh, selling CBD car parking uh, or public CBD land in general. It's already quite scarce. Car parking is constantly being threatened by developments. And I think it's important to consider the future options for the public use of this site, particularly as we're looking at uh, 80,000 or so in uh, 2030 at Greater Shepparton. And I'm really worried about the fact that it says in the report or in the MOU that the expectation is to replace like for like, but I don't quite understand how you're gonna be able to fit that with such a limited site, because there's gotta be services for the building, there has to be a ramp and it just doesn't seem to add up in terms of land size to me. Um, I also am concerned about the safety of actually using a, a multi-storey car park. So I already don't use the other one uh, because I think it's unsafe and dangerous and too much risk. And I know that's privately owned. Uh, so council doesn't currently have any multi-deck car parks that I know about. Um, and I'm also thinking that there's quite a lot of risk for you guys involved in running a property like that. Uh, and in terms of the safety of the public that we would need to consider as well. Uh, so I know it's mostly about the sale of the car park, so I'll just quickly run through this stuff, but really there's nothing over four storeys in this neighbourhood. The building's going to tower over the surrounding businesses and look into people's private residential yards. Uh, the location, as I've already said, is quite an awkward site. It's weird size and it's a weird shape. There's not really any capacity for green space, which is really important. Um, and I believe there's some apartment guidelines around that in the Victorian planning provisions. Uh, and there's also quite a concern around share walls and common areas for different tenants in social housing. Um, so this kind of four-storey building is not really what your affordable housing strategy suggests is the best practice, um, or not usually what the Department of Housing does in our area. Um, and in Melbourne, they're currently moving families from high density social housing uh, because they're finding that the complexes aren't suitable for uh, their needs. And I believe that there was a development in Olympic Avenue probably about 20 years ago that was um, also demolished because it had similar issues. <laughs> Just quickly on ACE. Um, so, Obviously, this is a huge part of this issue, and it was one of the first thoughts for me. I, when I was at River Connect, I did a lot of work with the ACE kids and taking them out, getting them in sunlight and nature, that was just so important for their well-being. This building will overshadow and overlook these vulnerable students. There'll be almost constant darkness and shading, and I, I can't imagine working in a classroom or, or being in a classroom that doesn't have natural light in it. It'd be quite depressing, really. Uh, for the construction, there will be noise and dust over their school and their little courtyard, which there is their only outdoor classroom on their own site. It's also going to be blocking half of their emergency exits and the only vehicle entry and emergency services vehicle entry for the school. It also makes their current uh, evacuation space redundant. They can't use it. These kids already have quite a disadvantage uh, and ACE has been such a, a guiding light for them in, in Shepparton really. It's, it's really the, their only option for a lot of these students. There's quite a lot of social impact and potential economic long-term impact involved in really the effect of that. 
they're, they're not sure if they can operate. I'm sure you've heard from them already with the safety access issues, but also with the potential risks for the students uh, in having such a large development overlooking them next door. I uh, know the council approval was granted for the school to move to this site with all those considerations around safety and risk and emergency services. And community and government funds also went into the build. Well, that's it in terms of slides. So really, I guess my conclusion, you might say this land is redundant or like not serving an important role in the community with its current use, but that's not true. It, it provides safe, open air, accessible parking with three hours, which is pretty rare, to businesses and residents visiting the CBD. It also provides a vital emergency exit, emergency services, vehicle access, and safe evacuation space to a school. And thirdly, the current state of this car park allows sunshine and bright light to fill the classrooms. It allows bringing nature inside to those kids. So please don't take away their safety and their light by approving the sale of this land. Thank you. Questions? Patience with the next presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you for hearing me this afternoon. Um, I have been a uh, business owner for 33 years, and we have owned the building at 141 Maud Street for uh, since 2007. Uh, so I am very concerned that the public, the social housing going behind our building will impact greatly in many ways. Uh, for a start, uh, we service a lot of, uh, we have a lot of contracts that we, like for example, tonight we've gone to Coles Express Kyala. So the workers still need to come back to the shop after hours, after 5.30. Um, and I'm often there by myself at that time as well. And I'm concerned about my safety and their safety, their vehicles may be parked away. And when they um, come back, at that time of the night, we're concerned about people um, being around the streets at that time. I also, uh, like in saying that the parking, they have to park their cars away during the day and they take the work vehicles. Um, they need to have a safe passage at, in the evening to go and get their vehicles to go home and also during the morning. And under WorkSafe, that is a requirement as a, as a business owner that I guarantee them a safe workplace, uh, or a safety um, path to come to work. Uh, the big thing about also I feel is at night, it's going to be unsafe to be working there at that time of the evening. You might say, look, the business stops at 5.30, but we simply don't. We need to keep on working during the night. We do a lot of things with supermarkets and petrol stations, etc. so that doesn't stop at 5.30. The parking situation is also, there's lack of parking now anyway. To take away that area of car parking space is not going to be good for neither customers or business owners or staff. Um, it could be argued that there's going to be car spaces put back there, but many customers have said to me that they will not park under a four-storey development of that nature. I'm concerned about the look of the building, overshadowing number one, um, the buildings that face into Maud Street where we're mostly single storey and there'll be three more storeys above us that will plunge us into darkness with our solar panels and uh, which will be basically devaluing uh, or taking away the purpose of those and also developing, uh, devaluing our properties. As a small business owner, um, there was no such thing as superannuation when we first started and so we bought the building in the faith that or in the hope that we would have that as our superannuation at the end of it. I believe that's going to, the property values will go down and I won't be able to rent out the building either. So that's a big concern. I put a lot of uh, blood, sweat and tears into the business over the last 33 years. And I feel that's going to be lost. Um, our livelihoods will be lost. Uh, I feel it's going to bring a lot of stress on for a lot of business owners about how they will continue to operate in that area. I know that social housing is needed. I'm not against social housing. I just believe it's not in the right place, particularly beside the school, but that's a whole new, another story. Um, and I would hope that you, uh, 
consider the fact that it's not a suitable place to put that type of housing for those people there. And the last point I wanted to make was uh, this, like the look of the building with the streetscape. It will look out of place, totally out of place in the CBD. The, a lot of people walk from that area of Maud Street where they park their cars and walk into the Mall, and I believe that's going to stop a lot of that traffic going into the Mall, which won't help the Mall um, owner, shop owners either. Excuse me. Um, so. I feel there's a lot of negativity coming from me, but that's how I, I believe it's going to be. It's not going to be a good thing for the area at all. I've run out of things to say. Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> Does any councillors need any point of clarification from Jenny's presentation? Councillor Brophy? Uh, look, uh, Jenny, thank you very much for your presentation. I just wanted to say also thank you very much for um, changing the time and um, being accommodating in regards to that. We really appreciate that too. That's okay. Not a thank problem. You. All right. Thank you so much, Jenny. Okay. Appreciate you coming in. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, well, you've got a nice submission there, I gather. You've looked at it yeah. in full. And yeah. um, I, I just think it covers all my thoughts about this particular <laughs> thing. But given, given the fact that I had to look it up all online because <laughs> I couldn't understand why you weren't using um, the former Planning Act that I've been involved with quite some times, um, 187. And so that's why I had to look up the new one, this section 114 that's been the, um, the reform to the Act and get my ideas, frame my ideas around that, why it was just such a short notification of the sale of the land, you know. So anyway, uh, that's where I framed it from, from all my online research. And I couldn't, he couldn't even find the way, I think there might have been only one public notice in the Shep News, I don't know. But I couldn't find that, and I am a daily subscriber, so I can't understand why that happened either. But when I did, and I've got it here surely in front of me now, and uh, I still say the same, that um, it should have said somewhere. With uh, I, I assumed that it was Wilchingham's aged persons that it was being built for. Am I correct in saying that? It's a Hello? proposal. It, yeah, Pat, it's a proposal from... Um, Beyond housing and Winteringham. Winteringham, yeah. yeah. Well, see, I sent a letter to the councillors saying that I had assumed that it was for elderly people, but I didn't get a response to that. So um, I, I have known of their works, and I've actually had I, one of my colleagues was there, um, Graham, I've watched him for a long time. And um, I knew of their work, I've known of their work all the time. I've been involved in support of any kind, you know. So I sort of assumed it was, but I really didn't know until I heard someone speaking on Radio ABC on Friday that it was really and truly that, you know. So that was framed on that, that it, it's not suitable for people that are homeless or needing affordable housing with a, with a disability, an age disability of any sort, when they've got to come in to, well, you, you were hopeful of getting back the underground public park car park where I park quite often I can tell you because it's a shorter walk for me to my business and I've been doing that for quite some years and I park opposite um, the back of the face college too so I've, lo I've looked at that there and I just can't see how that would work at all there in that Edward Street car park area and um, uh, I that's what I framed my submission on, the fact that I, I think it's not suitable in that format for any resident of Shepparton, according to the principles of um, the Planning Act, in, even in reform, because I believe Council's done some work on that already. And they're stating the same things as I always thought, you know, that it had to be safe and healthy um, uh, environment. I think I've written that in my thing, anyway. But um, in my proposal, in my submission, sorry. So um, I guess that I haven't got a lot more to say other than that. But what I've said is what I think. It's my opinion. And um, I don't think it's suitable for a residence built in airspace. They'll have to go reconnoitre uh, lifts and everything and around pillars to park. Although I think the, the second floor was going to be their car park. 
if some of them drive still, not a lot of people that I know do drive at that stage of life that need it desperately, you know. So um, I think the reconnoitering around that and up in the lift with that memorandum of understanding that that would be returned at the end. Um, but anybody, you know, and now that I firmly know that it was for, for Winchingham, I assumed that it was because they had aligned with um, Beyond Housing for Social Housing. And I said, I think I said that there somewhere, yes. And they have knowledge of Winchingham's work with the age sector of our community and know that they too have a concerning number of homeless people. The other thing there to add to that is that I took part in a workshop that the affordable housing people ran from council, uh, the project people had at North Shep Community House. So I took part in that and unfortunately I was only one person there because I've taken a very strong interest in all of this social housing since my years and years of work with people living in the North End and South End and Maroopna in social housing because of my work as a family support worker with the Department of um, oh, DWS then, I think, DSW in 96, 1979 when I started. I was with them for 16 years working as a family support worker with families living in social, uh, um, socio-economic um, low-income family, families experiencing very brave um, sort of issues with finding a place. And I, I then presented to the homelessness inquiry in March, 2020. They asked me to come to the public a sector at the end and I presented to that inquiry with my history to currently working with that same problem of homelessness and affordable housing because I redirected the people in my voluntary commitment to beyond housing if they had a housing problem or they needed housing. And also um, uh, I knew of, um, well, I've known of them for quite a while since they took up the, the, um, the option of- Just one more minute, Pat. Worker. Yeah, all right. They took up the uh, opportunity of um, running the sort of the non-government housing ministry prior to that, that we've always worked with the office here. We worked with them and took our families in there when they needed a roof over their heads. So um, yes, that's about all I've got to say about it. And that is really the basis of my submission that I have worked in the field for such a long time. And uh, I don't think it's suitable for, for any, well, I certainly don't think it's, it's suitable for any with the public car park underneath it. So, um, yeah. Thank you, Pat. That's all. Thank thanks, you so Pat. much, Pat. Is there any well, council you. that needs any clarification? Thank you, Pat. Thank you so much for the effort. Thank you. That thank you. Can you do as good. well. In thank the you. Have a good day, you. Pat. Bye. Bye. Okay. Um, so look, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for the opportunity. Um, my name is Sarah Thompson, and I've been a resident of, of Shepparton for the past 31 years of my, of my life. Um, today, I'll be speaking to you about why you should vote no to the sale, the gifting or the leasing of the land, part of the land or the airspace of the Nixon Maud and Edward Street car parks. My opening comment would be that it's been very hard as a community, um, a member of the Shepparton community, to understand why this site was selected for this exact development in the first place, when after requesting, um, no one has been able to produce the documentation reports or explanation that outline whether other sites were actually considered and evaluated, and ultimately why this one has been selected and progressed over others. Instead of having a true feasibility study undertaken to evaluate the true positive and negative outcomes of developing this site, uh, the report that was commissioned only investigates the economic benefits of developing this site. Not only did this report host multiple mistakes, it gives a very one-sided view to this site, which leaves the public and, and you as councillors without all the information required to make some truly informed decisions. So with that, there are three key factors that I'm gonna focus on today uh, as to why you should vote against the sale. They will be that this is the wrong type of development, that this is the wrong location for the development, and that this development will have profound negative outcomes for a secondary college and the school community. Mm. If we start with the wrong type of development, 
since this was publicised um, days before Christmas last year, um, I guess I've spent my time researching and speaking to people, and particularly those that do work within the healthcare sector, the allied health sector, and particularly those that work with vulnerable communities directly. When outlining what was proposed with a multi-storey, high density development in the middle of the CBD, the general reaction was shock at why this development would be considered to support our vulnerable communities. The health healthcare professionals had outlined that to create a truly safe living environment for people in these vulnerable positions, that single storey dwellings that do not have any shared walls with other dwellings is definitely preferred. They outlined that for vulnerable people, sharing hallways, lifts or stairwells with other people is extremely problematic from both an emotional and a physical safety perspective. They also outlined that green space, parks and playgrounds is absolutely preferred for the overall well-being of tenants of social housing. Social and affordable housing that is weaved through the community is the ultimate scenario and allows tenants to achieve a sense of community and belonging and allows our vulnerable community members to create networks and find role models to support the embedding of their lives within the community. The development proposed for this site goes against all of those principles. And so the question in my mind is, has the research been done uh, into the best possible design for our social and affordable housing? Are you ensuring you are creating the best housing possible for this target audience? Next, I'll speak about the location. So look, building on the points above, when we think about the numerous locations, the beautiful locations around Shepparton that meet and adhere to the principles outlined above to ensure the best wellbeing outcomes for the future tenants of our social housing. Why have we landed on this location? I think all of us can probably think of at least 10 different sites around Shepparton that would be better suited to create that low density, one storey housing that still has access to the CBD, to the key amenities, and also employment, but also has the added benefit of access to green space. Why haven't these sites been considered and evaluated? My last key point for you councillors is that this, this development is gonna have really poor outcomes for our ACE Secondary College. It's hard to believe that a development of this scale has been considered next to one of our current, very much thriving secondary colleges that is actually there to support our vulnerable students. Not only does this pose threats to the physical safety of the school community, it has the ability to truly disrupt or cease the operations entirely. Now, there are people far closer to this that you'll hear from on, um, on this topic, um, but we truly need to consider the long-term view here and the importance that this school has in the Shepparton community and try and do everything we can to support it. So look, in closing, we all want the best outcomes for everyone in this situation. I honestly believe that. And you, as councillors, have the opportunity to use your vote to do exactly that. You can do what's best for the vulnerable communities and future tenants of this social housing. You have the ability to support the community in its feedback and the long-term sustainability of the CBD. And you have the ability to ensure a secondary college can continue to operate safely and that the students now and into the future feel like a valued part of this community. I implore all of you that before you make your vote and ultimately decide the fate of this on behalf of the entire community, that you seek all the information possible about the suitability of the design of this development. That you consider whether there are, there are better locations in Shepparton that bring better outcomes for this type of development. And that you understand the full ramifications this development will have on our ACE Secondary College. Councillors, we voted for you as leaders and representatives of our community. Please listen to the feedback from the community, from those who put their trust in you to advocate on our behalf and use your vote to make a decision that can do the greatest good for all of us. Thank you, that's all from me. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your feedback and, and value your time very much. So thank you so much, Sarah. Bye. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, everyone.